Testament of Reuben, Patriarch of the Twelve Tribes of Israel, Testament of Reuben, Chapter 1. The copy of the Testament of Reuben, what things he charged his sons before he died in the 125th year of his life, when he was sick two years after the death of Joseph, his sons and his sons' sons were gathered together to visit him, and he said to them, My children, I am dying, and go the way of my fathers. And when he saw there Judah and Gad and Asher, his brethren, he said to them, Raise me up, my brethren, that I may tell to my brethren and to my children what things I have hidden in my heart. For from henceforth my strength faileth me. And he arose and kissed them and said, weeping, Hear, my brethren, give ear to Reuben your father, what things I command you. And behold, I call to witness against you this day, the Elohim of heaven, that ye walk not in the ignorance of youth and fornication, wherein I ran greedily, and I defiled the bed of Jacob my father. For I tell you that he smote me with a sore plague in my loins for seven months. And had not Jacob our father prayed for me to the Most High, surely the Most High would have destroyed me. For I was thirty years old when I did this evil in the sight of the Most High, and for seven months I was sick even unto death. And I repented for seven years in the set purpose of my soul before the Most High. Wine and strong drink I drank not, and flesh entered not into my mouth and I tasted not pleasant food, mourning over my sin, for it was great, and it shall not so be done in Israel. Testament of Reuben, chapter two. And now hear me, my children, what things I saw in my repentance concerning the seven spirits of error. Seven spirits are given against man from Belial, and they are chief of the works of youth and seven spirits are given to him at his creation, that in them should be done every work of man. The first spirit is of life, with which man's whole being is created. The second spirit is of sight, with which ariseth desire. The third spirit is of hearing, with which cometh teaching. The fourth spirit is of smelling, with which taste is given to draw air and breath. The fifth spirit is of speech, with which cometh knowledge. The sixth spirit is of taste, with which cometh the eating of meats and drinks, and by them strength is produced. For in food is the foundation of strength. The seventh spirit is of begetting and sexual intercourse, with which through love of pleasure sin also entereth in. Wherefore it is the last in order of creation and the first of youth, because it is filled with ignorance, which leadeth the young man as a blind man to a pit, and as a cattle to a precipice. The Testament of Reuben, Chapter 3 Besides all these, there is an eighth spirit of sleep, with which is created entrancement of man's nature and the image of death. With these spirits are mingled the spirits of error, the first, the spirit of fornication, dwelleth in the nature and in the senses. The second spirit of insatiousness in the belly. The third spirit of fighting in the liver and the gall. The fourth is the spirit of fawning and trickery, that through over-officiousness a man may be fair in seeming. The fifth is the spirit of arrogance, that a man may be stirred up and become high-minded. The sixth is the spirit of lying, in perdition and in jealousy, to feign words and to conceal words from kindred and friends. The seventh is the spirit of injustice, with which are theft and pilferings, that a man may work the desire of his heart. For injustice worketh together with the other spirits by means of craft. Besides all these, the spirit of sleep, the eighth spirit, is conjoined with error and fantasy, and so perisheth every young man, darkening his mind from the truth, and not understanding the law of the Most High, nor obeying the admonitions of his fathers, as befell me also in my youth. And now, my children, love the truth, 
and it shall preserve you. I counsel you, hear ye Reuben, your father. Pay no heed to the sight of a woman, nor yet associate privately with a female that is under the authority of a husband, nor meddle with affairs of womankind. For had I not seen Bilhah bathing in a covered place, I had not fallen into this great iniquity. For my mind, dwelling on the woman's nakedness, suffered me not to sleep until I had done the abominable deed. For while Jacob our father was absent with Isaac his father, when we were in Gadir, near to Ephrathah in Bethlehem, Bilhah was drunk and lay asleep uncovered in her chamber. And when I went in and beheld her nakedness, I wrought that impiety, and leaving her sleeping, I departed. And forthwith an angel of the Most High revealed to my father Jacob concerning my impiety, and he came and mourned over me, and touched her no more. The Testament of Reuben, Chapter 4 Pay no heed, therefore, to the beauty of women, and muse not upon their doings, but walk in singleness of heart in the fear of the Most High and be laboring in works, and roaming in study, and among your flocks, until the Most High give to you a wife, whom he will, that ye suffer not as I did. Until my father's death I had not boldness to look steadfastly into the face of Jacob, or to speak to any of my brethren. Because of my reproach, and even until now, my conscience afflicted me by reason of my sin. And my father comforted me, for he prayed for me unto the Most High, that the anger of the Most High might pass away from me, even as the Most High showed me. From henceforth then I was protected, and I sinned not. Therefore, my children, observe all things whatsoever I command you, and ye shall not sin. For fornication is the destruction of the soul, separating it from the Most High, and bringing it near to idols because it deceiveth the mind and understanding and bringeth down young men into hell before their time. For many hath fornication destroyed, because though a man be old or noble, it maketh him a reproach and a laughing stock with Belial and the sons of men. For in that Joseph kept himself from every woman and purged his thoughts from all fornication. He found favor before the Most High in men, for the Egyptian woman did many things, evil things unto him, and called for magicians, and offered him love potions, and the purpose of his soul admitted no evil desire. Therefore the Most High of my fathers delivered him from every visible and hidden death. For if fornication does not overcome your mind, neither shall the liar overcome you. The Testament of Reuben, Chapter 5 Hurtful are women, my children, because since they have no power or strength over the man, they act subtly through outward guise how they may draw him to themselves. And whom they cannot overcome by strength, him they overcome by craft. For moreover, the angel of the Most High told me concerning them and taught me that women are overcome by the spirit of fornication more than men and they devise evil in their heart against men. And by means of their adornment, they deceive first their minds and instill the poison by the glance of their eye. And then they take them captive by their doings. For a woman cannot overcome a man by force. Therefore, flee fornication, my children, and command your wives and your daughters that they adorn not their heads and their faces because every woman who acted deceitfully in these things have been reserved to everlasting punishment. For thus they allured the watchers before the flood, and as these continually beheld them, they fell into desire each of the other, and they conceived the act in their mind, and changed themselves into the shape of men, and appeared to them in their congress with their husbands. And the women, having in their minds desire toward their apparitions, gave birth to giants. For the watchers appeared to them as reaching even unto heaven. The Testament of Reuben, Chapter 6 Beware, therefore, of fornication. And if you wish to be pure in your mind, guard your senses against every woman. 
and command them likewise not to company with men, that they also may be pure in their mind. For constant meetings, even though the ungodly deed be not wrought, are to them an irremediable disease, and to us an everlasting reproach of the liar. For fornication hath neither understanding nor godliness in itself, and all jealousy dwelleth in the desire thereof. Therefore ye will be jealous against the sons of Levi, and will seek to be exalted over them, but ye shall not be able. For the Most High will work their avenging, and ye shall die by an evil death. For to Levi the Most High gave the sovereignty, and to Judah, and to me also with them, and to Dan and Joseph, that we should be for rulers. Therefore I command you to hearken to Levi, because he shall know the law of the Most High, and shall give ordinances for judgment and sacrifice for all Israel, until the completion of the times of Messiah, the High Priest, whom the Most High hath declared. I adjure you by the Elohim of heaven to work truth each one with his neighbor, and draw ye near to Levi in humbleness of heart, that ye may receive a blessing from his mouth. For he shall bless Israel, and especially Judah, because him hath the Most High chosen to rule over all the peoples. And worship we his seed, because he shall die for us in wars visible and invisible, and shall be among you an everlasting king. And Reuben died, after that he had given command to his sons, and they placed him in a coffin until they bore him up from Egypt and buried him in Hebron in the double cave where his fathers were. Shalom. The Testament of Simeon, Patriarch of the Twelve Tribes of Israel. Testament of Simeon, Chapter 1. The copy of the words of Simeon, what things he spake to his sons before he died, in the hundred and twentieth year of his life, in the year in which Joseph died. For they came to visit him when he was sick, and he strengthened himself, and set up and kissed them, and said to them, Hear, O my children, hear Simeon your father, what things I have in my heart. I was born of Jacob my father, his second son, and my mother Leah called me Simeon, because the Most High heard her prayer. I became strong exceedingly, I shrank from no deed, nor was I afraid of anything. For my heart was hard, and my mind was unmovable, and my bowels unfeeling because valor also has been given me from the Most High and to men in soul and in body. And at that time I was jealous of Joseph because our father loved him. And I set my mind against him to destroy him because the prince of deceit sent forth the spirit of jealousy and blinded my soul that I regarded him not as a brother and spared not Jacob my father. But his Elohim and the Elohim of his fathers sent forth his angel and delivered him out of my hands. For when I went into Sechem to bring ointment for the flocks and Reuben to Dotham, where were our necessaries and all our stores, Judah our brother sold him to the Ishmaelites. And when Reuben came, he was grieved, for he wished to have restored him safe to his father. But I was wroth against Judah, and that he let him go away alive. And for five months I continued wrathful against him. But the Most High restrained me, and withheld me from all working of my hands. For my right hand was half withered for seven days. And I knew, my children, that because of Joseph this happened to me. And I repented and wept. And I besought the Most High that he would restore my hand unto me, and that I might be kept from all pollution and envy 
and from all folly. For I knew that I had devised an evil deed before the Most High and Jacob my father on account of Joseph my brother, and that I envied him. And now, children, take heed of the spirit of deceit and of envy, for envy ruleth over the whole mind of a man, and suffereth him neither to eat, nor to drink, nor to do any good thing. It ever suggested to him to destroy him that he envieth, and he that is envied ever flourisheth, but he that envieth fades away. Two years of days I afflicted my soul with fasting in the fear of the Most High, and I learnt that deliverance from envy cometh by fear of the Most High. If a man flee to the Most High, the evil spirit runneth away from him, and his mind becometh easy, and henceforward he sympathizeth with him whom he envied, and condemneth not those who love him, and so he ceaseth from his envy. And my father asked concerning me, because he saw that I was sad, and said, I am pained in my liver, for I mourned more than they all, because I was guilty of the selling of Joseph. And when we went down into Egypt, and he bound me as a spy, I knew that I was suffering justly, and I grieved not. Now Joseph was a good man, and he had the spirit of the Most High within him, compassionate and pitiful, he bore not malice against me, nay, he loved me even as the rest of his brothers. Take heed therefore, my children, of all jealousy and envy, and walk in singleness of soul and with good heart, keeping in mind the brother of your father, that the Most High may give to you also grace and glory and blessings upon your heads, even as ye saw in him. All his days he reproached us not concerning this thing, but loved us as his own soul, and beyond his own sons. And he glorified us, and gave us riches, and cattle, and fruits freely to all of us. Do ye then also, my beloved children, love each one his brother with a good heart, and remove from you the spirit of envy? For this maketh savage the soul, and destroyeth the body, it turneth his purposes into anger and war, and stirreth up unto blood, and leadeth the mind unto frenzy, and suffereth not prudence to act in men. Moreover, it taketh away sleep, and causeth tumult to the soul, and trembling to the body. For even in sleep some malicious jealousy deluding him gnaweth at his soul, and with wicked spirits disturbeth it, and causeth the body to be troubled, and the mind to awake from sleep in confusion, and as though having a wicked and poisonous spirit, so appeareth it to men. Therefore was Joseph fair in appearance, and goodly to look upon, because there dwelt not in him any wickedness, for in trouble of the spirit the face declareth it. And now, my children, make your hearts good before the Most High, and your ways straight before men. And ye shall find grace before the Most High in men. And take heed not to commit fornication, for fornication is mother of all evils, separating from the Most High and bringing near to Belial. For I have seen it inscribed in the writings of Enoch, that your sons shall with you be corrupted in fornication, and shall do wrong against Levi with the sword. But they shall not prevail against Levi, for he shall wage the war of the Most High, and shall conquer all your host. And there shall be a few divided in Levi and Judah, and there shall be none of you for sovereignty, even as also my father Jacob prophesied in his blessings. Behold, I have foretold you all things, that I may be clear from the sin of your souls. Now if ye remove from you your envy and all your stiff-neckedness, as a rose shall my bones flourish in Israel, and as a lily my flesh in Jacob, and my odor shall be as the odor of Lebanus, and as cedars shall holy ones be multiplied from me forever, and their branches shall stretch afar off. Then shall perish the seed of Canaan, 
and a remnant shall not be to Amalek, and all the Cappadocians shall perish, and all the Hittites shall be utterly destroyed. Then shall fail the land of Ham, and every people shall perish. Then shall all the earth rest from trouble, and all the world under heaven from war. Then shall Shem be glorified, because the Most High, the Mighty One of Israel, shall appear upon earth as a man, and saved by him Adam. Then shall the spirits of deceit be given to be trampled underfoot, and men shall rule over the wicked spirits. Then will I arise in joy, and will bless the Most High because of his marvelous works, because the Most High have taken a body and eaten with men and saved men. And now, my children, obey Levi, and in Judah shall ye be redeemed. And be not lifted up against these two tribes, for from them shall arise to you the salvation of Elohim. For the Most High shall raise up from Levi as it were a priest, and from Judah as it were a king, Elohim and man. So shall he save all the Gentiles and the race of Israel. Therefore I command you all things, in order that ye also may command your children, that they may observe them throughout their generations. And Simeon made an end of commanding his sons, and slept with his fathers, being a hundred and twenty years old. And they laid him in a coffin of incorruptible wood, to take up his bones to Hebron. And they carried them up in a war of the Egyptians secretly. For the bones of Joseph the Egyptians guarded in the treasure house of the palace. For the sorcerers told them that at the departure of the bones of Joseph there should be throughout the whole of Egypt darkness and gloom, and an exceeding great plague to the Egyptians, so that even with a lamp a man should not recognize his brother. And the sons of Simeon bewailed their father according to the law of mourning, and they were in Egypt until the day of their departure from Egypt by the hand of Moses. Shalom. The Testament of Levi. Levi, son of Jacob, son of Isaac, son of Abraham. The copy of the words of Levi, what things he appointed to his sons, according to all that they should do, and what things should befall them until the day of judgment. He was sound in health when he called them to him, for it had been shown to him that he should die. And when they were gathered together, he said to them, I, Levi, was conceived in Haran and born there. And after that, I came with my father to Sechem. And I was young, about 20 years of age, when with Simeon, I wrought the vengeance on Hamor for our sister, Dinah. And when we were feeding our flocks in Abel Ma'ul, a spirit of understanding of the Most High came upon me. And I saw all men corrupting their way and that unrighteousness had built to itself walls, and iniquity set upon towers. And I grieved for the race of men, and I prayed to the Most High that I might be saved. Then there fell upon me a sleep, and I beheld a high mountain. This is the mountain of Aspis and Abel Ma'ul. And behold, the heavens were opened, and an angel of the Most High said to me, Levi, enter. And I entered from the first heaven into the second, and I saw their water hanging between the one and the other. And I saw the third heaven far brighter than those two, for there was in it a height without bounds. And I said to the angel, Wherefore is this? And the angel said to me, Marvel not at these, for thou shalt see four other heavens brighter than these, and without comparison. 
when thou shalt have ascended thither, because thou shalt stand near the Most High, and shalt be his minister, and shalt declare his mysteries to men, and shall proclaim concerning him who shall redeem Israel, and by thee and Judah shall the Most High appear among men, saving in them every race of men, and of the portion of the Most High shall be thy life, and he shall be thy field, and vineyard, fruits, gold, and silver. Hear then concerning the seven heavens, the lowest is for this cause more gloomy, in that it is near all the iniquities of men. The second hath fire, snow, ice, ready for the day of the ordinance of the Most High, and the righteous judgment of the Most High. In it are all the spirits of the retributions for vengeance on the wicked. In the third heaven are the host of the armies which are ordained for the day of judgment to work vengeance on the spirits of deceit and of the liar. And the heavens up to the fourth above, these are holy. For in the highest of all dwelleth the great glory in the holy of holies, far above all holiness. In the heaven next to it are the angels of the presence of the Most High, who minister and make propitiation to the Most High for all the ignorances of the righteous. And they offer to the Most High a reasonable, sweet-smelling savor and a bloodless offering. And in the heaven below this are the angels who bear the answers to the angels of the presence of the Most High. And in the heaven next to this are thrones, dominions, in which hymns are ever offered to the Most High. Therefore, whenever the Most High looketh upon us, all of us are shaken, yea, the heavens and the earth and the abysses are shaken at the presence of his majesty. But the sons of men, regarding not these things, sin and provoke the Most High. Now therefore, know that the Most High will execute judgment upon the sons of men. Because when the rocks are rent and the sun quenched and the waters dried up and the fire trembling and all creation troubled, and the invisible spirits melting away, and the grave spoiled in the suffering of the Most High, men unbelieving will abide in their iniquity. Therefore, with punishment shall they be judged. Therefore, the Most High have heard thy prayer to separate thee from iniquity, and that thou shouldest become to him a son, and a servant, and a minister of his presence. A shining light of knowledge shalt thou shine in Jacob, and as the sun shalt thou be to all the seed of Israel. And a blessing shall be given to thee and to all thy seed until the Most High shall visit all the heathen in the tender mercies of his son, even forever. Nevertheless, thy sons shall lay hands upon him to crucify him, and therefore have counsel and understanding been given thee, that thou mightest instruct thy sons concerning him because he that blesseth him shall be blessed, but they that curse him shall perish. And the angel opened to me the gates of heaven, and I saw the holy temple, and the Most High upon a throne of glory. And he said to me, Levi, I have given thee the blessings of the priesthood, until that I shall come and sojourn in the midst of Israel. Then the angel brought me to the earth, and gave me a shield and a sword, and said, Work vengeance on Sechem because of Dinah, and I will be with thee, because the Most High hath sent me. And I destroyed at that time the sons of Hamor, as it is written in the heavenly tablets. And I said to him, I pray thee, Most High, tell me thy name, that I may call upon thee in a day of tribulation. And he said to me, I am the angel who intercedeth for the race of Israel, that he smite them not utterly, because every evil spirit attacketh it. And after these things I was, as it were, awakened, and blessed the Most High, and the angel that intercedeth for the race of Israel, and for all of the righteous. And when I came to my father, I found a brazen shield, wherefore also the name of the mountain is Aspis, which is near Gebal, on the right side of Abila. And I kept these words in my heart, I took counsel with my father and with Reuben, my brother, 
that he should bid the sons of Hamor that they should be circumcised. For I was jealous because of the abomination which they had wrought in Israel. And I slew Sechem at the first, and Simeon slew Hamor. And after this our brethren came and smote the city with the edge of the sword, and our father heard it and was wroth. And he was grieved in that they had received the circumcision, and after that had been put to death. And in his blessings he dealt otherwise with us. For we sinned because we had done this thing against his will, and he was sick upon that day. But I knew that the sentence of the Most High was for evil upon Sechem, for they sought to do to Sarah as they did to Dinah, our sister, and the Most High hindered them. And so they persecuted Abraham, our father, when he was a stranger, and they harried his flocks when they were multiplied upon him. And Jeblay, his servant, born in his house, they shamefully handled. And thus they did to all strangers, taking away their wives by force, and the men themselves driving into exile. But the wrath of the Most High came suddenly upon them to the uttermost. And I said to my father, Be not angry, sir, because by thee will the Most High bring to naught the Canaanites, and will give their land to thee, and to thy seed after thee. For from this day forward shall Sechem be called a city of them that are without understanding. For as a man mocketh at a fool, so did we mock them, because they wrought folly in Israel to defile our sister. And we took our sister from thence and departed and came to Bethel. And there I saw the thing again, even as the former, after we had passed 70 days. And I saw seven men in white raiment saying to me, Arise, put on the robe of the priesthood and the crown of righteousness and the breastplate of understanding and the garment of truth and the diadem of faith and the tiara of miracle and the ephod of prophecy. And each one of them bearing each of these things put them on me and said, From henceforth become a priest of the Most High, thou and thy seed forever. And the first anointed me with holy oil and gave to me the rod of judgment. The second washed me with pure water and fed me with bread and wine, the most holy things, and clad me with a holy and glorious robe. The third clothed me with a linen vestment like to an ephod. The fourth put round me a girdle like unto purple. The fifth gave to me a branch of rich olive. The sixth placed a crown on my head. The seventh placed on my head a diadem of priesthood and filled my hands with incense so that I served as a priest to the Most High. And they said to me, Levi, thy seed shall be divided into three branches for a sign of the glory of the Most High who is to come. And first shall he be that hath been faithful. No portion shall be greater than his. The second shall be in the priesthood. The third, a new name shall be called over him because he shall arise as king from Judah and shall establish a new priesthood after the fashion of the Gentiles to all the Gentiles. And his appearing shall be unutterable as of an exalted prophet of the seed of Abraham, your father. Every desirable thing in Israel shall be for thee and for thy seed and everything fair to look upon shall ye eat. And the table of the Most High shall thy seed apportion. And some of them shall be high priests and judges and scribes, for by their mouth shall the holy place be guarded. And when I awoke, I understood that this thing was like unto the former, and I hid this also in my heart, and told it not to any man upon the earth. And after two days, I and Judah went up to Isaac after our father. And the father of my father blessed me according to all the words of the vision which I had seen. And he would not come with us to Bethel. And when we came to Bethel, my father Jacob saw in a vision concerning me that I should be to them for a priest unto the Most High. And he rose up early in the morning and paid tithes of all to the Most High through me. And we came to Hebron to dwell there and Isaac called me continually to put me in remembrance of the law of the Most High, even as the angel of the Most High showed to me. And he taught me the law of the priesthood, of sacrifices, 
whole burnt offerings, first fruits, free will offerings, and thank offerings. And each day he was instructing me and was busied for me before the Most High. And he said to me, Take heed, my child, of the spirit of fornication, for this shall continue and shall by thy seed pollute the holy things. Take therefore to thyself, while yet thou art young, a wife, not having blemish, nor yet polluted, nor of the race of the Philistines or Gentiles. And before entering into the holy place, bathe. And when thou offerest the sacrifice, wash. And again, when thou finishest the sacrifice, wash. Of twelve trees ever having leaves, offer up the fruits to the Most High, as also Abraham taught me. And of every clean beast and clean bird, offer a sacrifice to the Most High. And of every firstling and of wine, offer first fruits. And every sacrifice thou shalt salt with salt. Now therefore, observe whatsoever I command you, children, for whatsoever things I have heard from my fathers, I have made known to you. I am clear from all your ungodliness and transgression, which you will do in the end of the ages against the Savior of the world, acting ungodly, deceiving Israel, and raising up against it great evils from the Most High. And ye will deal lawlessly with Israel, so that Jerusalem shall not endure your wickedness. But the veil of the temple shall be rent, so as not to cover your shame. And ye shall be scattered as captives among the heathen, and shall be for a reproach, and for a curse, and for a trampling underfoot. For the house which the Most High shall choose shall be called Jerusalem, as is contained in the book of Enoch the righteous. Therefore, when I took a wife, I was twenty-eight years old, and her name was Melchah. And she conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Gershom, for we were sojourners in our land. For Gershom is interpreted sojourning. And I saw concerning him that he would not be in the first rank. And Kohat was born in my thirty-fifth year towards the east. And I saw in a vision that he was standing on high in the midst of all the congregation. Therefore I called his name Kohat, which meaneth beginning of majesty and instruction. And thirdly, she bare to me Merari in the fortieth year of my life. And since his mother bare him with difficulty, she called him Merari, which meaneth my bitterness, because he also died. And Yoshebed was born in my sixty-fourth year in Egypt, for I was renowned then in the midst of my brethren. And Gershom took a wife, and she bare to him Lamni and Simei, and the sons of Kohath, Amram, Isar, Chibro, and Ozel, and the sons of Merari, Muli, and Hamusi. And in my ninety-fourth year, Amram took Yoshebed, my daughter, to him to wife, for they were born in one day, he and my daughter. Eighty years old was I when I went into the land of Canaan, and eighteen years when I slew Sechem. And at nineteen years I became priest, and at twenty-eight years I took a wife, and at forty years I went into Egypt, and behold, ye are my children, my children even of a third generation. In my hundred and eighteenth year, Joseph died. And now, my children, I command you that ye fear the Most High with your whole heart, and walk in simplicity according to all his law. And do ye also teach your children learning, that they may have understanding in all their life, reading unceasingly the law of the Most High. For everyone who shall know the law of the Most High shall be honored, and shall not be a stranger wheresoever he goeth. Yea, many friends shall he gain more than his forefathers, and many men shall desire to serve him, and to hear the law from his mouth. Work righteousness, my children, upon the earth, that ye may find treasure in the heavens, and sow good things in your souls, that ye may find them in your life. For if ye sow evil things, ye shall reap all trouble and affliction. Get wisdom in the fear of the Most High with diligence. For though there shall be a leading into captivity, and cities be destroyed, and lands and gold and silver, and every possession shall perish, the wisdom of the wise none can take away, save the blindness of ungodliness and the palsy of sin. 
for even among his enemies shall it be to him glorious, and in a strange country a home, and in the midst of foes shall it be found a friend. If a man teach these things and do them, he shall be enthroned with kings, as was also Joseph our brother. And now, my children, I have learnt from the writing of Enoch that at the last you will deal ungodly, laying your hands upon the Messiah in all malice, and your brethren shall be ashamed because of you, and to all the Gentiles shall it become a mocking. For our father Israel shall be pure from the ungodliness of the chief priest who shall lay their hands upon the Savior of the world. Pure is the heaven above the earth, and ye are the lights of the heaven as the sun and the moon. What shall all the Gentiles do if ye be darkened in ungodliness? So shall ye bring a curse upon our race, for whom came the light of the world, which was given among you for the lighting up of every man. Him will ye desire to slay, teaching commandments contrary to the ordinances of the Most High. The offerings of the Most High will ye rob, and from his portion will ye steal. And before ye sacrifice to the Most High, ye will take the choicest parts, in despitefulness eating them with harlots. Amid excesses will ye teach the commandments of the Most High. The women that have husbands will ye pollute, and the virgins of Jerusalem will ye defile, and with harlots and adulteresses will ye be joined. The daughters of the Gentiles will ye take for wives, purifying them with an unlawful purification, and your union shall be like unto Sodom and Gomorrah in ungodliness. And ye will be puffed up because of the priesthood, lifting yourselves up against men. And not only so, but being puffed up also against the commands of the Most High, ye will scoff at the holy things, mocking in despitefulness. Therefore, the temple which the Most High shall choose shall be desolate in uncleanness, and ye shall be captives throughout all nations, and ye shall be an abomination among them. And ye shall receive reproach and everlasting shame from the righteous judgment of the Most High. And all who see you shall flee from you. And were it not for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob our fathers, not one from my seed should be left upon the earth. And now I have learnt in the book of Enoch that for seventy weeks will ye go astray, and will profane the priesthood, and pollute the sacrifices, and corrupt the law, and set at naught the words of the prophets. In perverseness ye will persecute righteous men, and hate the godly. The words of the faithful will ye abhor, and the man who reneweth the law in the power of the Most High will ye call a deceiver. And at last, as ye suppose, ye will slay him, not understanding his resurrection, wickedly taking upon your heads innocent blood. Because of him shall your holy places be desolate, polluted even to the ground, and ye shall have no place that is clean. But ye shall be among the Gentiles a curse and a dispersion, until he shall again look upon you, and in pity shall take you to himself through faith and water. And because ye have heard concerning the seventy weeks, hear also concerning the priesthood. For in each jubilee there shall be a priesthood. In the first jubilee, the first who is anointed into the priesthood shall be great, and shall speak to the Most High as to a father. And his priesthood shall be filled with the fear of the Most High. And in the day of his gladness shall he arise for the salvation of the world. In the second jubilee, he that is anointed shall be conceived in the sorrow of the loved ones, and his priesthood shall be honored and shall be glorified among all. And the third priest shall be held fast in sorrow, and the fourth shall be in grief, because unrighteousness shall be laid upon him exceedingly, and all Israel shall hate each one his neighbor. The fifth shall be held fast in darkness, likewise also the sixth and the seventh. And in the seventh there shall be such pollution as I am not able to express before the Most High and men, for they shall know it who do these things. Therefore shall they be in captivity and for a prey, and their land and their substance shall be destroyed. And in the fifth week they shall return into their desolate country, and shall renew the house of the Most High. And in the seventh week shall come the priests, worshippers of idols, contentious, lovers of money, proud, 
lawless, lascivious, abusers of children and beasts. And after their punishment shall have come from the Most High, then will the Most High raise up to the priesthood a new priest, to whom all the words of the Most High shall be revealed, and he shall execute a judgment of truth upon the earth in the fullness of days. And his star shall arise in heaven as a king shedding forth the light of knowledge in the sunshine of day. And he shall be magnified in the world until his ascension. He shall shine forth as the sun in the earth and shall drive away all darkness from the world under heaven. And there shall be peace in all the earth. The heavens shall rejoice in his days and the earth shall be glad and the clouds shall be joyful and the knowledge of the Most High shall be poured forth upon the earth as the water of seas. And the angels of the glory of the presence of the Most High shall be glad in him. The heavens shall be opened, and from the temple of glory shall the sanctification come upon him with the Father's voice, as from Abraham the father of Isaac. And the glory of the Most High shall be uttered over him, and the spirit of understanding and of sanctification shall rest upon him in the water. He shall give the majesty of the Most High to his sons in truth forevermore, and there shall none succeed him for all generations, even forever. And in his priesthood shall all sin come to an end, and the lawless shall rest from evil, and the just shall rest in him. And he shall open the gates of paradise, and shall remove the threatening sword against Adam. And he shall give to his saints to eat from the tree of life, and the spirit of holiness shall be on them. And the liar shall be bound by him, and he shall give power to his children to tread upon the evil spirits. And the Most High shall rejoice in his children, and the Most High shall be well pleased in his beloved forever. Then shall Abraham and Isaac and Jacob be joyful, and I will be glad, and all the saints shall put on gladness. And now, my children, ye have heard all. Choose therefore for yourselves either the darkness or the light, either the law of the Most High or the works of the liar. And we answered our father, saying, Before the Most High will we walk according to his law. And our father said, The Most High is witness, and his angels are witnesses, and I am witness, and ye are witnesses concerning the word of your mouth. And we said, We are witnesses. And thus Levi ceased giving charge to his sons, and he stretched out his feet and was gathered to his fathers after he had lived a hundred and thirty-seven years. And they laid him in a coffin, and afterwards they buried him in Hebron by the side of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. So be it. The Testament of Judah, son of Jacob, son of Isaac, son of Abraham. The copy of the words of Judah, what things he spake to his sons before he died. They gathered themselves together and came to him, and he said to them, I was the fourth son born to my father, and my mother called me Judah, saying, I give thanks to the Most High, because he hath given to me even a fourth son. I was swift and active in my youth, and obedient to my father in everything. And I honored my mother and my mother's sister. And it came to pass, when I became a man, that my father Jacob prayed over me, saying, Thou shalt be a king, and prosperous in all things. And the Most High showed me favor in all my works, both in the field and at home. When I saw that I could run with the hind, then I caught it and prepared meat for my father. I seized upon the roes in the chase, and all that was in the plains I outran. A wild mare I outran, and I caught it and tamed it, and I slew a lion and plucked a kid out of its mouth. I took a bear by its paw and rolled it over a cliff, and if any beast turned upon me, I rent it like a dog. I encountered the wild boar and overtaking it in the chase, I tore it. A leopard in Hebron leaped upon the dog, 
and I caught it by the tail and flung it from me, and it was dashed to pieces in the coast of Gaza. A wild ox feeding in the field, I seized by the horns, and whirling it round and stunning it, I cast it from me and slew it. And when the two kings of the Kenyanites came in warlike array against our flocks, and much people with them, I by myself rustled upon King Sir and seized him, and I beat him upon the legs and dragged him down, and so I slew him. And the other king, Tapua, I slew as he sat upon his horse, and so I scattered all the people. Akor the king, a man of giant stature, hurling darts before and behind as he sat on horseback, I slew, for I hurled a stone of sixty pounds weight and cast it upon his horse and killed him. And I fought with Akor for two hours, and I killed him, and I clave his shield into two parts, and I chopped off his feet. And as I stripped off his breastplate, behold, eight men, his companions, began to fight with me. I wound round, therefore, my garment in my hand, and I slung stones at them, and killed four of them, and the rest fled. And Jacob my father slew Belisa, king of all the kings, a giant in strength, twelve cubits high, and fear fell upon them, and they ceased from making war with us. Therefore my father had no care in the wars when I was among my brethren, for he saw in a vision concerning me that an angel of might followed me everywhere, that I should not be overcome. And in the south there befell us a greater war than that in Sechem, and I joined in battle array with my brethren, and pursued a thousand men, and slew of them two hundred men, and four kings. And I went up against them upon the wall, and two other kings I slew. And so we freed Hebron, and took all the captives of the kings. On the next day we departed to Arita, a city strong and walled and inaccessible, threatening us with death. Therefore I and Gad approached on the east side of the city, and Reuben and Levi on the west and south. And they that were upon the wall, thinking that we were alone, charged down upon us. And so our brethren secretly climbed up the wall on both sides by ladders and entered into the city while the men knew it not. And we took it with the edge of the sword. And those who had taken refuge in the tower, we set fire to the tower and took both it and them. And as we were departing, the men of Thafu set upon our captives. And we took it with our sons and fought with them even to Thafu. And we slew them and burnt their city and spoiled all the things that were therein. And when I was at the waters of Chesube, the men of Jobel came against us to battle, and we fought with them, and their allies from Salome we slew, and we allowed them no means of escaping and of coming against us. And the men of Machir came upon us on the fifth day to carry away our captives, and we attacked them and overcame them in fierce battle, for they were a host and mighty in themselves and we slew them before they had gone up the ascent of the hill. And when we came to their city, their women rolled upon us stones from the brow of the hill on which the city stood. And I and Simeon hid ourselves behind the town and seized upon the heights and utterly destroyed the whole city. And the next day it was told us that the cities of the two kings with a great host were coming against us. I therefore and Dan reigned ourselves to be Amorites, and we went as allies into their city. And in the depth of night our brethren came, and we opened to them the gates, and we destroyed all the men and their substance, and we took for a prey all that was theirs, and their three walls we cast down. And we drew near to Thamna, where was all the refuge of the hostile kings. Then having received hurt, I was wroth and charged upon them to the brow of the hill. And they sling at me with stones and darts, and had not Dan, my brother, aided me, they would have been able to slay me. We came upon them therefore with wrath, and they all fled. And passing by another way, they besought my father, and he made peace with them, and we did to them no hurt, but made a truce with them, and restored to them all the captives. And I built Damna, and my father built Rambael. I was twenty years old when this war befell, and the Kenyanites feared me and my brethren. Moreover, I had much cattle, 
and I had for the chief of my herdsmen Iran the Adulamite. And when I went to him, I saw Barsan, king of Adullam, and he made us a feast, and he entreated me, and gave me his daughter Bathshua to wife. She bare me Ir, and Onan, and Shelah, and the two of them the Most High smote that they died childless, for Shelah lived, and his children are ye. Eighteen years we abode at peace, our father and we, with his brother Esau and his sons with us. After that we came from Mesopotamia, from Laban. And when eighteen years were fulfilled in the fortieth year of my life, Esau, the brother of my father, came upon us with much people and strong. And he fell by the bow of Jacob, and was taken up dead in Mount Seir, even as we went above Eramna was he slain. And we pursued after the sons of Esau. Now they had a city with walls of iron and gates of brass, and we could not enter into it. And we encamped around and besieged them. And when they opened not to us after twenty days, I set up a ladder in the sight of all. And with my shield upon my head, I climbed up, assailed with stones of three talents weight. And I climbed up and slew four who were mighty among them. And the next day, Reuben and Gad entered in and slew sixty others. Then they asked from us terms of peace, and being aware of our father's purpose, we received them as tributaries. And they gave us two hundred cores of wheat, five hundred baths of oil, fifteen hundred measures of wine, until we went down into Egypt. After these things, my son Er took to wife Tamar from Mesopotamia, a daughter of Aram. Now Er was wicked, and he doubted concerning Tamar, because she was not of the land of Canaan. And on the third day, an angel of the Most High smote him in the night, and he had not known her, according to the evil craftiness of his mother, for he did not wish to have children from her. In the days of the wedding feast, I espoused Onan to her, and he also in wickedness knew her not, though he lived with her a year. And when I threatened him, he lay with her, according to the command of his mother, and he also died in his wickedness. And I wished to give Shela also to her, but my wife Bathshua suffered it not, for she bore a spite against Tamar, because she was not of the daughters of Canaan, as she herself was. And I knew that the race of Canaan was wicked, but the thoughts of youth blinded my heart. And when I saw her pouring out wine, in the drunkenness of wine was I deceived, and I fell before her. And while I was away, she went and took for Sheila a wife from the land of Canaan. And when I knew what she had done, I cursed her in the anguish of my soul, and she also died in the wickedness of her sons. And after these things, while Tamar was a widow, she heard after two years that I was going up to shear my sheep. Then she decked herself in bridal array and set over against the city by the gate. For it is a law of the Amorites that she who is about to marry sit in fornication seven days by the gate. I therefore, being drunk at the waters of Choseb, recognized her not by reason of wine, and her beauty deceived me through the fashion of her adorning. And I turned aside to her and said, I would enter into thee. And she said to me, What wilt thou give me? And I gave her my staff and my girdle and my royal crown, and I lay with her, and she conceived. I then, not knowing what she had done, wished to slay her, but she privily sent my pledges and put me to shame. And when I called her, I heard also the secret words which I spoke when lying with her in my drunkenness. And I could not slay her because it was from the Most High. For I said, lest happily she did it in subtlety and received the pledge from another woman. But I came near her no more till my death because I had done this abomination in all Israel. Moreover, they who were in the city said that there was no bride in the city, because she came from another place and sat for a while in the gate, and she thought that no one knew that I had gone into her. And after this we came into Egypt to Joseph because of the famine. Forty-six years old was I, and seventy-three years lived I there. And now, my children, in what things soever I command you, hearken to your father, and keep all my sayings to perform the ordinances of the Most High, and to obey the commands of the Most High, 
and walk not after your lust, nor in the thoughts of your imaginations, in the haughtiness of your heart, and glory not in the works of strength and of youth, for this also is evil in the eyes of the Most High. For since I also glory that in wars the face of no woman of goodly form ever deceived me, and upbraided Reuben my brother concerning Bilhah, the wife of my father, the spirits of jealousy and of fornication arrayed themselves within me, until I fell before Bathsheba the Canaanite, and Tamar, who was a spouse to my sons. And I said to my father-in-law, I will counsel with my father, and so will I take thy daughter. And he showed me a boundless store of gold in his daughter's behalf, for he was a king. And he decked her with gold and pearls, and caused her to pour out wine for us at the feast in womanly beauty. And the wine led my eyes astray, and pleasure blinded my heart. And I loved her, and I fell, and transgressed the commandment of the Most High, and the commandment of my fathers. And I took her to wife. And the Most High rewarded me according to the thought of my heart, insomuch that I had no joy in her children. And now, my children, be not drunk with wine, for wine turneth the mind away from the truth, and kindleth in it the passion of lust, and leadeth the eyes into error. For the spirit of fornication hath wine as a minister to give pleasures to the mind. For these two take away the power from a man. For if a man drink wine to drunkenness, he disturbeth his mind with filthy thoughts to fornication, and exciteth his body to carnal union. And if the cause of the desire be present, he worketh the sin, and is not ashamed. Such is wine, my children, for he who is drunken reverence no man. For lo, it made me also to error, so that I was not ashamed of the multitude in the city. Because before the eyes of all I turned aside unto Tamar, and I worked a great sin, and I uncovered the covering of the shame of my sons. After that I drank wine, I reverenced not the commandment of the Most High, and I took a woman of Canaan to wife. Wherefore, my children, he who drinketh wine needeth discretion, and herein is discretion in drinking wine, that a man should drink as long as he keepeth decency. But if he go beyond this bound, the spirit of deceit attacketh his mind, and worketh his will, and it maketh the drunkard to talk filthy, and to transgress, and not to be ashamed, but even to exult in his dishonor, accounting himself to do well. He that committeth fornication, and uncovereth his nakedness, hath become the servant of fornication, and escapeth not from the power thereof, even as I also was uncovered. For I gave my staff, that is, the stay of my tribe, and my girdle, that is, my power, and my diadem, that is, the glory of my kingdom. Then I repented for these things, and took no wine or flesh until my old age, nor did I behold any joy. And the angel of the Most High showed me that forever do women bear rule over king and beggar alike, and from the king they take away his glory and from the valiant man his strength, and from the beggar even that little which is the stay of his poverty. Observe therefore, my children, moderation in wine, for there are in it four evil spirits, one, lust, two, wrath, three, riot, and four, filthy lucre. If ye drink wine in gladness, with shamefacedness, with the fear of the Most High, ye shall live, for if ye drink not with shamefacedness, and the fear of the Most High departeth from you, then cometh drunkenness, and shamelessness stealeth in. But even if ye drink not at all, take heed lest ye sin in words of outrage, and fighting, and slander, and transgression of the commandments of the Most High. So shall ye perish before your time. Moreover, wine revealeth the mysteries of the Most High in men to aliens even as I also revealed the commandments of the Most High and the mysteries of Jacob my father to the Kenyanitess Bathsheba, to whom the Most High forbade to declare them. And wine also is a cause of war and confusion. I charge you therefore, my children, not to love money, nor to gaze upon the beauty of women, because for the sake of money and beauty, I was led astray to Bathsheba the Kenyanite. 
For I know that because of these two things shall ye who are my race fall into wickedness. For even wise men among my sons shall they mar, and shall cause the kingdom of Judah to be diminished, which the Most High gave me because of my obedience to my father. For I never disobeyed a word of Jacob my father. For all things whatsoever he commanded, I did. And Abraham, the father of my father, blessed me that I should be king in Israel. And Isaac further blessed me in like manner. And I know that from me shall the kingdom be established. For I have read also in the books of Enoch the righteous, what evils ye shall do in the last days. Take heed therefore, my children, of fornication and the love of money. Hearken to Judah your father, for these things do withdraw you from the love of the Most High and the law of the Most High and blind the understanding of the soul, and teach arrogance, and suffer not a man to have compassion upon his neighbor. They rob his soul of all goodness, and bind him in toils and troubles, and take away his sleep, and devour his flesh, and hinder the sacrifices of the Most High. And he remembereth not blessing, and he hearkeneth not to a prophet when he speaketh, and is vexed at the word of godliness. For one who serveth two passions contrary to the commandments of the Most High cannot obey the Most High, because they have blinded his soul, and he walketh in the daytime as in the night. My children, the love of money leadeth to idols, because when led astray through money, men make mention of those who are no gods, and it causeth him who hath it to fall into madness. For the sake of money I lost my children, and but for the repentance of my flesh and the humbling of my soul and the prayers of Jacob, my father, I should have died childless. But the Elohim of my fathers, who is pitiful and merciful, pardoned me because I did it in ignorance. For the prince of deceit blinded me and I was ignorant as a man and as flesh being corrupted in sins. And I learnt my own weaknesses while thinking myself unconquerable. Learn, therefore, my children, that two spirits wait upon the man, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And in the midst is the spirit of the understanding of the mind, to which it belongeth to turn whithersoever it will. And the works of truth and the works of error are written upon the breast of men, and each one of them the Most High knoweth. And there is no time at which the works of men can be hid from him. For on the bones of his breast hath he been written down before the Most High. And the Spirit of truth testifieth all things, and accuseth all. And he who sinneth is burnt up by his own heart, and cannot raise his face unto the judge. And now, my children, love Levi, that ye may abide, and exalt not yourselves against him, lest ye be utterly destroyed. For to me the Most High gave the kingdom, and to him the priesthood and he set the kingdom beneath the priesthood. To me he gave the things upon the earth, to him the things in the heavens. As the heaven is higher than the earth, so is the priesthood of the Most High higher than the kingdom upon the earth. For the Most High chose him above thee to draw near to him and to eat of his table and first fruits, even the choice things of the sons of Israel. And thou shalt be to them as a seed, for as on the sea just and unjust are tossed about, some taken into captivity while others are enriched, so also shall every race of men be in thee. Some are in jeopardy and taken captive, and others shall grow rich by means of plunder. For they who rule will be as great sea monsters, swallowing up men like fishes. Free sons and daughters do they enslave, houses, lands, flocks, money will they plunder, and with the flesh of many will they wrongfully feed the ravens and the cranes. And they will go on further in evil, advancing on still in covetousness. And there shall be false prophets like tempest, and they shall persecute all righteous men. And the Most High shall bring upon them divisions, one against another. And there shall be continual wars in Israel, and among men of another race shall my kingdom be brought to an end, until the salvation of Israel shall come, 
until the appearing of the Elohim of righteousness, that Jacob and all the Gentiles may rest in peace. And he shall guard the might of my kingdom forever. For the Most High swear to me with an oath that the kingdom should never fail from me and from my seed for all days, even forever. Now I have much grief, my children, because of your lewdness and witchcrafts and idolatries, which ye will work against the kingdom. Following them that have familiar spirits, ye will make your daughters singing girls and harlots for divinations and demons of error, and ye will be mingled in the pollutions of the Gentiles. For which things sake the Most High shall bring upon you famine and pestilence, death and the sword, avenging siege and dogs for the rending in pieces of enemies and revilings of friends, destruction and blighting of eyes, children slaughtered, wives carried off, possessions plundered, temple of the Most High in flames, your land desolate, your own selves enslaved among the Gentiles, and they shall make some of you eunuchs for their wives. And whenever ye will return to the Most High with humility of heart, repenting and walking in all of the commandments of the Most High, then will the Most High visit you in mercy and in love, bringing you from out of the bondage of your enemies. And after these things shall a star arise to you from Jacob in peace, and a man shall rise from my seed like the son of righteousness, walking with the sons of men in meekness and righteousness, and no sin shall be found in him. And the heavens shall be opened above him to shed forth the blessing of the Spirit from the Father. And he shall shed forth a spirit of grace upon you, and ye shall be unto him sons in truth, and ye shall walk in his commandments, the first and the last. This is the branch of the Most High, and this the wellspring unto life for all flesh. Then shall the scepter of my kingdom shine forth, and from your root shall arise a stem, and in it shall arise a rod of righteousness to the Gentiles, to judge and to save all that call upon the Most High. And after these things shall Abraham and Isaac and Jacob arise unto life, and I and my brethren will be chiefs, even your scepter in Israel. Levi first, I the second, Joseph third, Benjamin fourth, Simeon fifth, Issachar sixth, and so all in order. And the Most High blessed Levi, the angel of the presence, me, the powers of glory, Simeon, the heaven, Reuben, the earth, Issachar, the sea, Zebulun, the mountains, Joseph, the tabernacle, Benjamin, the lights of heaven, Dan, the fatness of earth, Naphtali, the sun, Gad, the olive, Asher, and there shall be one people of the Most High, and one tongue, and there shall no more be a spirit of deceit, a belier, for he shall be cast into the fire forever. And they who have died in grief shall arise in joy, and they who have lived in poverty for the Most High's sake shall be made rich, and they who have been in want shall be filled, and they who have been weak shall be made strong, and they who have been put to death for the Most High's sake shall awake in life, and the hearts of Jacob shall run in joyfulness, and the eagles of Israel shall fly in gladness, but the ungodly shall lament, and sinners all shall weep, and all the people shall glorify the Most High forever. Observe, therefore, my children, all the law of the Most High, for there is hope for all them who follow his way aright. And he said to them, I die before your eyes this day, a hundred and nineteen years old. Let no one bury me in costly apparel, nor tear open my bowels. For this shall they who are kings do, and carry me up to Hebron with you. And Judah, when he had said these things, fell asleep, and his sons did according to all whatsoever he commanded them, and they buried him in Hebron with his fathers. The Testament of Issachar, Patriarch of the Twelve Tribes of Israel. The Testament of Issachar, Chapter 1. The record of the words of Issachar, 
he called his sons and said to them, Hearken, my children, to Issachar your father. Give ear to my words, ye who are beloved of the Most High. I was the fifth son born to Jacob, even the higher of the mandrakes. For Reuben brought in mandrakes from the field, and Rachel met him and took them. And Reuben wept, and at his voice Leah, my mother, came forth. Now these mandrakes were sweet-smelling apples, which the land of Aram produced on high ground below a ravine of water. And Rachel said, I will not give them to thee, for they shall be to me instead of children. Now there were two apples, and Leah said, Let it suffice thee that thou hast taken the husband of my virginity, wilt thou also take these? And she said, Behold, let Jacob be to thee this night instead of the mandrakes of thy son. And Leah said to her, Boast not, and vaunt not thyself, for Jacob is mine, and I am the wife of his youth. But Rachel said, How so? For to me was he first espoused, and for my sake he served our father fourteen years. What shall I do to thee? because the craft and the subtlety of men are increased, and craft prospereth upon the earth. And were it not so, thou wouldest not now see the face of Jacob, for thou art not his wife, but in craft were taken to him in my stead. And my father deceived me, and removed me on that night, and suffered me not to see him, for had I been there, it had not happened thus. And Rachel said, Take one mandrake, and for the other thou shalt hire him from me for one night. And Jacob knew Leah, and she conceived and bare me. And on account of the hire, I was called Issachar. Then appeared to Jacob an angel of the Most High, saying, Two children shall Rachel bear, for she hath refused company with her husband, and hath chosen continency. And had not Leah my mother given up the two apples for the sake of his company, she would have borne eight sons. And for this thing she bare six, and Rachel too, because on account of the mandrakes the Most High visited her. For he knew that for the sake of children she wished to company with Jacob, and not for lust of pleasure. For she went further, and on the morrow too gave up Jacob, that she might receive also the other mandrake. Therefore, the Most High hearkened to Rachel because of the mandrakes, for though she desired them, she ate them not, but brought them to the priest of the Most High who was at that time, and offered them up in the house of the Most High. When therefore I grew up, my children, I walked in uprightness of heart, and I became a husbandman for my parents and my brethren, and I brought in fruits from the field according to their season, and my father blessed me. For he saw that I walked in simplicity, and I was not a busybody in my doings, nor malicious and slanderous against my neighbor. I never spoke against anyone, nor did I censor the life of any man, but walked in the simplicity of my eyes. Therefore, when I was thirty years old, I took to myself a wife, for my labor wore away my strength, and I never thought upon pleasure with women. But through my labor my sleep sufficed me, and my father always rejoiced in my simplicity. For on whatever I labored, I offered first to the Most High, by the hands of the priest, of all my produce and all my first fruits, then to my father, and then took for myself. And the Most High increased twofold his benefits in my hands, and Jacob also knew that the Most High aided my simplicity. For on every poor man and every one in distress I bestowed the good things of the earth in simplicity of heart. And now, hearken to me, my children, and walk in simplicity of heart, for I have seen in it all that is well-pleasing to the Most High. The simple coveteth not gold, defraudeth not his neighbor, longeth not after manifold dainties, delighteth not in varied apparel, doth not picture to himself to live a long life, but only waiteth for the will of the Most High, and the spirits of error have no power against him. For he cannot allow within his mind a thought of female beauty, that he should not pollute his mind in corruption. No envy can enter into his thoughts, no jealousy melteth away his soul, 
nor doth he brood over gain with insatiate desire, for he walketh in uprightness of life, and beholdeth all things in simplicity, not admitting in his eyes malice from the error of the world, lest he should see the perversion of any of the commandments of the Most High. Keep therefore the law of the Most High, my children, and get simplicity, and walk in guilelessness, not prying over curiously into the commands of the Most High and the business of your neighbor, but love the Most High and your neighbor, have compassion on the poor and weak, bow down your back unto husbandry, and labor in tillage of the ground in all manner of husbandry, offering gifts unto the Most High with thanksgiving. For with the first fruits of the earth did the Most High bless me, even as he blessed all the saints from Abel even until now. For no other portion is given to thee than of the fatness of the earth, whose fruits are raised by toil. For our father Jacob blessed me with blessings of the earth and of first fruits, and Levi and Judah were glorified by the Most High among the sons of Jacob. For the Most High made choice of them, and to the one he gave the priesthood, to the other the kingdom. Them therefore obey, and walk in the simplicity of your father, for unto Gad hath it been given to destroy the temptations that are coming upon Israel. I know, my children, that in the last times your sons will forsake simplicity, and will cleave unto avarice, and leaving guilelessness will draw near to malice and forsaking the commandments of the Most High will cleave unto Belial, and leaving husbandry will follow after their wicked devices, and shall be dispersed among the Gentiles, and shall serve their enemies. And do you therefore command these things to your children, that if they sin, they may the more quickly return to the Most High, for he is merciful, and will deliver them even to bring them back into their land. I am a hundred and twenty years old, and I know not against myself a sin unto death. Except my wife, I have not known any woman. I never committed fornication in the haughtiness of my eyes. I drank not wine to be led astray thereby. I coveted not any desirable thing that was my neighbor's. Guile never entered into my heart. A lie never passed through my lips. If any man grieved, I wept with him and I shared my bread with the poor. I never ate alone, I moved no landmark. In all my days I wrought godliness and truth. I loved the Most High with all my strength. Likewise also did I love every man, even as my own children. So ye also do these things, my children, and every spirit of Belial shall flee from you, and no deed of malicious men shall rule over you. And every wild beast shall ye subdue, having with yourselves the Elohim of heaven, walking with men in simplicity of heart. And he commanded them that they should carry him up to Hebron and bury him there in the cave with his fathers. And he stretched out his feet and died, the fifth son of Jacob, in a good old age, and with every limb sound, and with strength unabated, he slept the eternal sleep. Shalom. Testament of Asher, Patriarch of the Twelve Tribes of Israel. The Testament of Asher, Chapter 1. The record of the Testament of Asher, what things he spake to his sons in the hundred and twentieth year of his life. While he was still in health, he said to them, Hearken, ye children of Asher, to your father, and I will declare to you all that is right in the sight of the Most High. Two ways hath the Most High given to the sons of men, and two minds, and two doings, and two places, and two ends. Therefore, all things are by twos, one corresponding to the other. There are two ways of good and evil, with which are the two minds in our breast distinguishing them. Therefore, if the soul take pleasure in good, all its actions are in righteousness. And though it sin, it straightway repenteth. 
for having his mind set upon righteousness and casting away maliciousness, he straightway overthroweth the evil and uprooteth the sin. But if his mind turn aside in evil, all his doings are in maliciousness, and he driveth away the good, and taketh unto him the evil, and is ruled by the liar. And even though he work what is good, he perverteth it in evil. For whenever he beginneth as though to do good, he bringeth the end of his doing to work evil, seeing that the treasure of the devil is filled with the poison of an evil spirit. There is then, he saith, a soul which speaketh the good for the sake of the evil, and the end of the doing leadeth to mischief. There is a man who showeth no compassion upon him who serveth his turn in evil, and this thing hath two aspects, but the whole is evil. And there is a man that loveth him that worketh evil. He likewise dwelleth in evil, because he chooseth even to die in an evil cause for his sake. And concerning this, it is clear that it hath two aspects, but the whole is an evil work. And though there is love, it is but wickedness concealing the evil, even as it beareth a name that seemeth good, but the end of the doing tendeth unto evil. Another stealeth, worketh unjustly, plundereth, defraudeth, and withal pitieth the poor. This too hath a twofold aspect, but the whole is evil. Defrauding his neighbor, he provoketh the Most High, and sweareth falsely against the Most High, and yet pitieth the poor. The Most High who commandeth the law, he setteth at naught and provoketh. And this too hath a twofold aspect. Another committeth adultery and fornication, and abstaineth from meats. Yet in his fasting he worketh evil, and by his power and his wealth perverteth many and out of his excessive wickedness worketh the commandments. This too hath a twofold aspect, but the whole is evil. Such men are as swine or hares, for they are half clean, but in very deed are unclean. For the Most High in the heavenly tablets have thus declared, Do not ye therefore, my children, wear two faces like unto them, of goodness and of wickedness, but cleave unto goodness only, for in goodness doth the Most High rest, and men desire it. From wickedness flee away, destroying the devil by your good works. For they that are two-faced serve not the Most High, but their own lust, so that they may please Belial and men like unto themselves. For good men, even they that are single of face, though they be thought by them that are two-faced to error, are just before the Most High. For many in killing the wicked do two works, an evil by a good, but the whole is good, because he hath uprooted and destroyed that which is evil. One man hateth him that showeth mercy, and doeth wrong to the adulterer and the thief. This too is two-faced, but the whole work is good because he followeth the Most High's example, in that he receiveth not that which seemeth good with that which is really bad. Another desireth not to see good days with them that riot, lest he defile his mouth and pollute his soul. This too is two-faced, but the whole is good. For such men are like to stags and to hinds, because in a wild condition they seem to be unclean, but they are altogether clean because they walk in a zeal for the Most High and abstain from what the Most High also hateth and forbiddeth by his commandments, and they ward off the evil from the good. Ye see therefore, my children, how there are two in all things, one against the other, and the one is hidden by the other. Death succeedeth to life, dishonor to glory, night to day, and darkness to light and all things are under the day, and just things life. Wherefore also everlasting life awaiteth death. Nor may be it be said that the truth is a lie, nor right wrong, for all truth is under the light, even as all things are under the Most High. All these things I proved in my life, and I wondered not from the truth of the Most High. 
and I searched out the commandments of the Most High, walking with singleness of face according to all my strength unto that which is good. Take heed therefore ye also my children to the commandments of the Most High, following the truth with singleness of face. For they that are two-faced receive two-fold punishment. Hate the spirits of error which strive against men. Keep the law of the Most High, and give not heed unto evil as unto good. But look unto the thing that is good indeed, and keep it in all commandments of the Most High, having your conversation unto him, and resting in him. For the ends at which men do aim to show their righteousness, and know the angels of the Most High from the angels of Hasatan. For if the soul depart troubled, it is tormented by the evil spirit, which with it also served in lust and evil works. But if quietly and with joy it have known the angel of peace, it shall comfort him in life. Become not my children as Sodom, which knew not the angels of the Most High and perished forever. For I know that ye will sin, and ye shall be delivered into the hands of your enemies, and your land shall be made desolate. And ye shall be scattered unto the four corners of the earth, and ye shall be set at naught in the dispersion as useless water, until the Most High shall visit the earth, and shall come as a man, with men eating and drinking, and in peace breaking the head of the dragon through water. He shall save Israel and all nations, the Most High speaking in the person of man. Therefore tell ye these things to your children, that they disobey him not. For I have read in the heavenly tablets that in very deed you will disobey him and act ungodly against him, not giving heed to the law of the Most High, but to the commandments of men. Therefore shall ye be scattered as Gad and as Dan, my brethren, who shall not know their own lands, tribe, and tongue. But the Most High will gather you together in faith through the hope of his tender mercy for the sake of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And when he had said these things unto them, he charged them, saying, Bury me in Hebron. And he fell into a peaceful sleep and died. And after this, his sons did as he had charged them, and they carried him up and buried him with his fathers. Shalom. The Testament of Zebulun, Patriarch of Israel. The Testament of Zebulun, Chapter 1. The Record of Zebulun which he enjoined his children in the 114th year of his life, 32 years after the death of Joseph. And he said to them, Hearken to me, sons of Zebulun, attend to the words of your father. I am Zebulun, a good gift to my parents. For when I was born, our father was increased very exceedingly, both in flocks and herds, when with the streaked rods he had his portion. I know not, my children, that in all my days I have sinned, save only in thought. Nor do I remember that I have done any iniquity, except the sin of ignorance which I committed against Joseph. For I screened my brethren, not telling to my father what had been done. And I wept sore in secret, for I feared my brethren, because they had all agreed together, that if any one should declare the secret, he should be slain with the sword. But when they wished to kill him, I adjured them much with tears not to be guilty of this iniquity. For Simeon and Gad came against Joseph to kill him, and Joseph fell upon his face and said unto them, Pity me, my brethren, have compassion upon the bowels of Jacob our father. Lay not upon me your hands to shed innocent blood, for I have not sinned against you. Yea, if I have sinned with chastening, chastise me, but lay not upon me your hand for the sake of Jacob our father. And as he spake these words, I pitied him and began to weep, and my heart melted within me, and all the substance of my bowels was loosened within my soul. And Joseph also wept, and I too wept with him, and my heart throbbed fast, and the joints of my body trembled and I was not able to stand. And when he saw me weeping with him and them coming against him to slay him, he fled behind me, beseeching them. 
And Reuben arose and said, My brethren, let us not slay him, but let us cast him into one of these dry pits, which our fathers digged and found no water. For for this cause the Most High forbade that water should rise up in them, in order that Joseph might be preserved. And the Most High appointed it so, until they sold him to the Ishmaelites. For in the price of Joseph, my children, I had no share. But Simeon and Gad and six other of our brethren took the price of Joseph and brought sandals for themselves, their wives, and their children, saying, We will not eat of it, for it is the price of our brother's blood, but will tread it down underfoot, because he said that he was king over us, and so let us see what his dreams mean. Therefore is it written in the writing of the law of Enoch, that whosoever will not raise up seed to his brother, his sandal shall be unloosed, and they shall spit into his face. And the brethren of Joseph wished not that their brother should live, and the Most High loosed unto them the sandal of Joseph. For when they came into Egypt, they were unloosed by the servants of Joseph before the gate, and so made obeisance to Joseph after the fashion of Pharaoh. And not only did they make obeisance to him, but were spit upon also, falling down before him forthwith. And so they were put to shame before the Egyptians. For after this, the Egyptians heard all the evils which he had done to Joseph. After these things, they brought forth food. For I, through two days and two nights, tasted nothing through pity for Joseph. And Judah ate not with them, but watched the pit. For he feared lest Simeon and Gad should run back and slay him. And when they saw that I also ate not, they set me to watch him until he was sold. And he remained in the pit three days and three nights, and so was sold famishing. And when Reuben heard that while he was away, Joseph had been sold, he rent his clothes about him and mourned, saying, How shall I look in the face of Jacob my father? And he took the money and ran after the merchants and found no one, for they had left the main road and journeyed hastily through rugged byways. And Reuben ate no food on that day. Dan therefore came to him and said, Weep not, neither grieve, for I have found what we can say to our father Jacob. Let us slay a kid of the goats and dip it in the coat of Joseph. And we will say, Look, if this is the coat of thy son, for they stripped off from Joseph the coat of our father when they were about to sell him and put upon him an old garment of a slave. Now Simeon had the coat and would not give it up, wishing to rend it with his sword, for he was angry that Joseph lived and that he had not slain him. Then we all rose up together against him and said, If thou give it not up, we will say that thou alone didst this wickedness in Israel. And so he gave it up, and they did even as Dan had said. And now, my children, I bid you to keep the commands of the Most High, and to show mercy upon your neighbor, and to have compassion towards all, not towards men only, but also towards beast. For for this thing's sake the Most High blessed me, and when all my brethren were sick, I escaped without sickness. For the Most High knoweth the purposes of each, have therefore compassion in your hearts, my children, because even as a man doeth to his neighbor, even so also will the Most High do to him. For the sons of my brethren were sickening, were dying on account of Joseph, because they showed not mercy in their hearts. But my sons were preserved without sickness, as ye know. And when I was in Canaan by the sea coast, I caught spoil of fish for Jacob my father. And when many were choked in the sea, I abode unhurt. I was the first who made a boat to sail upon the sea, for the Most High gave me understanding and wisdom therein. And I let down a rudder behind it, and I stretched a sail on an upright mast in the mist. And sailing therein along the shores, I caught fish for the house of my father until we went into Egypt. And through compassion I gave of my fish to every stranger. And if any man were a stranger, or sick, or aged, I boiled the fish, and dressed them well, and offered them to all men as every man had need, bringing them together and having compassion upon them. Wherefore also the Most High granted me to take much fish, 
For he that imparteth unto his neighbor receiveth manifold more from the Most High. For five years I caught fish, and gave thereof to every man whom I saw, and brought sufficient for all the house of my father. In the summer I caught fish, and in the winter I kept sheep with my brethren. Now I will declare unto you what I did. I saw a man in distress and nakedness in winter time, and had compassion upon him, and stole away a garment secretly from my house, and gave it to him who was in distress. Do you therefore, my children, from that which the Most High bestoweth on you, show compassion and mercy impartially to all men, and give to every man with a good heart. And if ye have not at the time wherewith to give to him that asketh you, have compassion for him in bowels of mercy. I know that my hand found not at that time wherewith to give to him that asked me, and I walked with him weeping for more than seven furlongs, and my bowels yearned towards him unto compassion. Have therefore yourselves also, my children, compassion towards every man with mercy, that the Most High also may have compassion upon you, and have mercy upon you. Because also in the last days the Most High sendeth his compassion on the earth, and wheresoever he findeth bowels of mercy, he dwelleth in him. For how much compassion a man hath upon his neighbors, so much also hath the Most High upon him. For when we went down into Egypt, Joseph bore no malice against us. And when we saw he was filled with compassion and looking towards him, do ye also, my children, approve yourselves without malice and love one another, and reckon not each one the evil of his brother. For this breaketh unity and divideth all kindred and troubleth the soul. For he who beareth malice hath not bowels of mercy. Mark the waters that they flow together and sweep along stones, trees, sand. But if they are divided into many streams, the earth sucketh them up and they become of no account. So also shall ye be if ye be divided. Divide not yourselves into two heads, for everything which the Most High made hath but one head. He gave two shoulders, hands, feet, but all the members are subject unto the one head. I have learnt by the writing of my fathers that in the last days ye will depart from the Most High and be divided in Israel. And ye will follow two kings and will work every abomination and every idol will ye worship. And your enemies shall lead you captive. And ye shall dwell among the nations with all infirmities and tribulations and anguish of soul. And after these things ye will remember the Most High and will repent and he will lead you back. For he is merciful and full of compassion, not imputing evil to the sons of men, because they are flesh, and the spirits of error deceive them in all their doings. And after these things shall the Most High himself arise to you, the light of righteousness and healing and compassion shall be upon his wings. He shall redeem all captivity of the sons of men from the liar, and every spirit of error shall be trodden down. And he shall bring back all the nations to zeal for him. And ye shall see the Most High in the fashion of a man, whom the Most High shall choose. Jerusalem is his name. And again, with the wickedness of your words will ye provoke him to anger. And ye shall be cast away, even unto the time of consummation. And now, my children, grieve not that I am dying, nor be troubled in that I am passing away from you. For I shall arise once more in the midst of you, as a ruler in the midst of his sons. And I will rejoice in the midst of my tribe, as many as have kept the law of the Most High, and the commandments of Zebulun their father. But upon the ungodly shall the Most High bring everlasting fire, and will destroy them throughout all generations. I am hastening away unto my rest, as did my fathers. But do ye fear the Most High, your Elohim, with all your strength, all the days of your life? And when he had said these things, he fell calmly asleep, and his sons laid him in a coffin, and afterwards they carried him up to Hebron and buried him with his fathers. Shalom.
Testament of Dan, Patriarch of the Twelve Tribes of Israel. The Testament of Dan, Chapter 1. The record of the words of Dan, which he spake to his sons in his last days. In the 125th year of his life, he called together his family and said, Hearken to my words, ye sons of Dan. Give heed to the words of the mouth of your father. I have proved in my heart and in my whole life that truth with just dealing is good and well-pleasing to the Most High, and that lying and anger are evil, because they teach man all wickedness. I confess this day to you, my children, that in my heart I rejoiced concerning the death of Joseph, a true and good man. And I rejoiced at the selling of Joseph, because his father loved him more than us. For the spirit of jealousy and of vain glory said to me, Thou also art his son. And one of the spirits of Belial wrought with me, saying, Take this sword, and with it slay Joseph. So shall thy father love thee when he is slain. This is the spirit of anger that counseled me, that even as a leopard devoureth a kid, so should I devour Joseph. But the Elohim of Jacob our father gave him not over into my hands that I should find him alone, nor suffered me to work this iniquity that two tribes should be destroyed in Israel. And now, my children, I am dying, and I tell you of a truth, that unless ye keep yourselves from the spirit of lying and of anger, and love truth and long suffering, ye shall perish. There is blindness in anger, my children, and no wrathful man regarded any person with truth. For though it be a father or a mother, he behaveth towards them as enemies. Though it be a brother, he knoweth him not. Though it be a prophet of the Most High, he disobeyeth him. Though a righteous man, he regardeth him not. A friend he doth not acknowledge. For the spirit of anger encompasseth him with the nets of deceit, and blindeth his natural eyes, and through lying darkeneth his mind, and giveth him a sight of his own making. And wherewith encompasseth he his eyes, in hatred of heart, and he giveth him a heart of his own against his brother unto envy. My children, mischievous is anger, for it becometh as a soul to the soul itself, and the body of the angry man it maketh its own, and over his soul it getteth the mastery, and it bestoweth upon the body its own power, that it may work all iniquity. And whenever the soul doeth aught, it justifieth what has been done, since it seeth not. Therefore, he who is wrathful, if he be a mighty man, hath a treble might in his anger, one by the might and aid of his servants, and a second by his wrath, whereby he persuadeth and overcometh in injustice, and having a third of the nature of his own body and of his own self working the evil. And though the wrathful man be weak, yet hath he a might twofold of that which is by nature, for wrath ever aideth such in mischief. This spirit goeth always with lying at the right hand of Satan, that his works may be wrought with cruelty and lying. Understand ye therefore the might of wrath, that it is vain. For it first of all strengthened him and stingeth him in his word. Then by deeds it strengtheneth him who is angry, and with bitter punishments disturbeth his mind, and so stirreth up his great wrath in his soul. Therefore when any one speaketh against you, be not ye moved unto anger. And if any man praiseth you as good, be not lifted up nor elated either to the feeling or showing of pleasure. For first it pleaseth the hearing, and so stirreth up the understanding, to understand the grounds for anger, and then, being wrathful, he thinketh that he is justly angry. If he fall into any loss or ruin, my children, be not troubled, for this very spirit maketh men desire that which hath perished, in order that they may be inflamed by the desire. If ye suffer loss willingly, be not vexed, for from vexation he raiseth up wrath with lying. And wrath with lying is a twofold mischief, and they speak one with another that they may disturb the mind. And when the soul is continually disturbed, the Most High departeth from it, and Belial ruleth over it.
Observe therefore my children the commandments of the Most High and keep his law and depart from wrath and hate lying that the Most High may dwell among you and Belial may flee from you. Speak truth each one with his neighbor so shall ye not fall into lust and confusion but ye shall be in peace having the Elohim of peace so shall no war prevail over you. Love the Most High through all your life Unite one another with a true heart. For I know that in the last days ye will depart from the Most High, and will provoke Levi unto anger, and will fight against Judah, but ye shall not prevail against them. For an angel of the Most High shall guide them both, for by them shall Israel stand. And whensoever ye depart from the Most High, ye will walk in all evil, working the abominations of the Gentiles, going astray with women of them that are ungodly, and the spirits of error shall work in you with all malice. For I have read in the book of Enoch the righteous that your prince is Satan, and that all the spirits of fornication and pride shall be subject unto Levi, to lay a snare for the sons of Levi, to cause them to sin before the Most High. And my sons will draw near unto Levi, and sin with them in all things. And the sons of Judah will be covetous, plundering other men's goods like lions. Therefore shall ye be led away with them in captivity, and there shall ye receive all the plagues of Egypt and all the malice of the Gentiles. And so, when ye return to the Most High, ye shall obtain mercy, and he shall bring you into his sanctuary, calling peace upon you. And there shall arise unto you from the tribe of Judah and of Levi the salvation of the Most High. And he shall make war against Belial, and he shall give the vengeance of victory to our coast. And the captivity shall he take from Belial, even the souls of the saints, and shall turn disobedient hearts unto the Most High, and shall give to them who call upon him everlasting peace, and the saints shall rest in Eden, and the righteous shall rejoice in the new Jerusalem, which shall be unto the glory of Elohim forever and ever. And no longer shall Jerusalem endure desolation, nor Israel be led captive. For the Most High shall be in the midst of her, dwelling among men, even the Holy One of Israel, reigning over them in humility and in poverty. And he who believeth on him shall reign in truth in the heavens. And now, my children, fear the Most High, and take heed unto yourselves of Satan and his spirits, and draw near unto the Most High, and to the angel that intercedeth for you. For he is a mediator between the Most High and man, for the peace of Israel. He shall stand up against the kingdom of the enemy. Therefore is the enemy eager to destroy all that call upon the Most High. For he knoweth that in the day on which Israel shall believe, the kingdom of the enemy shall be brought to an end, and the very angel of peace shall strengthen Israel, that it fall not into the extremity of evil. And it shall be in the time of the iniquity of Israel, that the Most High will depart from them, and will go after him that doeth his will. For unto none of his angels shall it be as unto him. And his name shall be in every place of Israel, and among the Gentiles, Savior. Keep therefore yourselves, my children, from every evil work, and cast away wrath and all lying, and love truth and long suffering. And the things which ye have heard from your father do ye also impart to your children, that the father of the Gentiles may receive you. For he is true and long-suffering, meek and lowly, and teacheth by his works the law of the Most High. Depart therefore from all unrighteousness, and cleave unto the righteousness of the law of the Most High, and bury me near my fathers. And when he had said these things, he kissed them, and slept the long sleep. And his sons buried him, and after that they carried up his bones to the side of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Nevertheless, as Dan had prophesied unto them that they should forget the law of their Elohim and should be alienated from the land of their inheritance and from the race of Israel and from their kindred, so also it came to pass. Shalom. The Testament of Naphtali, Patriarch of the Twelve Tribes of Israel. The Testament of Naphtali, Chapter 1. The Record of the Testament of Naphtali, what things he ordained at the time of his death in the hundred and thirty-second year of his life, when his sons were gathered together in the seventh month, 
the fourth day of the month, he, being yet good in health, made them a feast and good cheer. And after he was awake in the morning, he said to them, I am dying, and they believed him not. And he blessed the Most High and affirmed that after yesterday's feast, he should die. He began then to say to his sons, Hear my children, ye sons of Natali, hear the words of your father. I was born from Bilhah, and because Rachel dealt craftily and gave Bilhah in place of herself to Jacob, and she bore me upon Rachel's lap, therefore was I called Naphtali. And Rachel loved me because I was born upon her lap. And when I was of young and tender form, she was wont to kiss me and say, Would that I might see a brother of thine from mine own womb like unto thee, whence also Joseph was like unto me in all things, according to the prayers of Rachel. Now my mother was Bilhah, daughter of Rotheus, the brother of Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, and she was born on one and the selfsame day with Rachel. And Rotheus was of the family of Abraham, a Chaldean, fearing the Most High, freeborn and noble. And he was taken captive and was brought by Laban, and he gave him Aina, his handmaid, to wife. And she bore a daughter and called her Zilpah, after the name of the village in which he had been taken captive. And next she bore Bilhah, saying, My daughter is eager after what is new, for immediately that she was born she was eager for the breast. And since I was swift on my feet like a deer, my father Jacob appointed me for all errands and messages, and as a deer did he give me his blessing. For as the potter knoweth the vessel, what it containeth, and bringeth clay thereto, so also doth the Most High make the body in accordance with the Spirit. And according to the capacity of the body doth he implant the Spirit, and the one is not deficient from the other by a third part of a hair. For by weight and measure and rule is every creature of the Most High. And as the potter knoweth the use of each vessel, whereto it sufficeth, so also doth the Most High know the body, how far it is capable for goodness, and when it beginneth in evil. For there is no created thing and no thought which the Most High knoweth not, for he created every man after his own image. As man's strength, so also is his work. And as his mind, so also is his work. And so also is his word, in the law of the Most High, or in the law of Belial. And as there is a division between light and darkness, between seeing and hearing, so also is there a division between man and man, and between woman and woman. Neither is it said that there is any superiority in anything, either of the face or of other like things. For the Most High made all things in their order, the five senses in the head, and he joineth on the neck to the head, the hair also for comeliness, the heart moreover for understanding, the belly for the dividing of the stomach, the calamus for health, the liver for wrath, the gall for bitterness, the spleen for laughter, the reins for craftiness, the loins for power, the ribs for containing, the back for strength, and so forth. So then, my children, be ye orderly unto good things in the fear of the Most High, and do nothing disorderly in scorn or out of its due season. For if thou bid the eye to hear, it cannot, so neither in darkness can ye do the works of light. Be ye not therefore eager to corrupt your doings through excess or with empty words to deceive your souls. Because if ye keep silence in purity of heart, ye shall be able to hold fast the will of the Most High and to cast away the will of the devil. Sun and moon and stars change not their order, so also ye shall not change the law of the Most High in the disorderliness of your doings. Nations went astray and forsook the Most High and changed their order and followed stones and stocks, following after spirits of error. But ye shall not be so, my children, recognizing in the firmament, in the earth, and in the sea, and in all created things, the Most High who made them all, that ye become not as Sodom, which changed the order of its nature. In like manner, also the watchers changed the order of their nature, whom also the Most High cursed at the flood, and for their sakes made desolate the earth, that it should be uninhabited and fruitless. These things I say, my children, for I have read in the holy writing of Enoch that ye yourselves also will depart from the Most High, walking according to all the wickedness of the Gentiles, and ye will do according to all the iniquity of Sodom, 
and the Most High will bring captivity upon you, and there shall ye serve your enemies. And ye shall be covered with all affliction and tribulation, until the Most High shall have consumed you all. And after that, ye shall have been diminished and made few. Ye will return and acknowledge the Most High your Elohim, and he will bring you back into your own land according to his abundant mercy. And it shall be, after that they shall come into the land of their fathers. They will again forget the Most High and deal wickedly. And the Most High shall scatter them upon all the face of the earth until the compassion of the Most High shall come. A man working righteousness and showing mercy unto all them that are afar off and them that are near. For in the fortieth year of my life I saw in a vision that the sun and the moon were standing still on the Mount of Olives at the east of Jerusalem. And behold, Isaac, the father of my father, saith to us, Run and lay hold of them, each one according to his strength. And he that sees them, his shall be the sun and the moon. And we all of us ran together, and Levi laid hold of the sun, and Judah outstripped the others and seized the moon, and they were both of them lifted up with them. And when Levi became as a son, a certain young man gave to him twelve branches of palm, and Judah was bright as the moon, and under his feet were twelve rays. And Levi and Judah ran and laid hold each of the other, and lo, a bull upon the earth having two great horns, and an eagle's wings upon his back. And we wished to seize him, but could not. For Joseph outstripped us and took him, and descended up with him on high. And I saw, for I was there, and behold, a holy writing appeared to us, saying, Assyrians, Medes, Persians, Elamites, Galatians, Chaldeans, Syrians, shall possess in captivity the twelve tribes of Israel. And again, after seven months, I saw our father Jacob standing by the sea of Jamnia, and we his sons were with him. And behold, there came a ship sailing by, full of dried flesh, without sailors or pilot, and there was written upon the ship, Jacob. And our father saith to us, Let us embark on our ship. And when we had gone on board, there arose a vehement storm and a tempest of mighty wind. And our father, who was holding the helm, flew away from us. And we, being tossed with the tempest, were borne along over the sea. And the ship was filled with water and beaten about with a mighty wave, so that it was well nigh broken in pieces. And Joseph fled away upon a little boat, and we all were divided upon twelve boards. And Levi and Judah were together. We therefore all were scattered even unto afar off. Then Levi, girt about with sackcloth, prayed for us all unto the Most High. And when the storm ceased, immediately the ship reached the land as though in peace. And lo, Jacob our father came, and we rejoiced with one accord. These two dreams I told to my father, and he said to me, These things must be fulfilled in their season, after that Israel hath endured many things. Then my father saith unto me, I believe that Joseph liveth, for I see always that the Most High numbereth him with you. And he said, Weepeth. Thou livest, Joseph, my child, and I behold thee not, and thou seest not Jacob that begat thee. And he caused us also to weep at these words of his, and I burned in my heart to declare that he had been sold, but I feared my brethren. Behold, my children, I have shown unto you the last times, that all shall come to pass in Israel. Do ye also therefore charge your children that they be united to Levi and to Judah? For through Judah shall salvation arise unto Israel, and in him shall Jacob be blessed. For though his tribe, and through his tribe shall the Most High be seen dwelling among men on the earth to save the race of Israel, and he shall gather together the righteous from the Gentiles. If ye work that which is good, my children, both men and angels will bless you, and the Most High will be glorified through you among the Gentiles, and the devil will flee from you, and the wild beast will fear you, and the angels will cleave to you. For as if a man rear up a child well, he hath a kindly remembrance thereof. So also for a good work there is a good remembrance with the Most High. But him who doeth not that which is good, men and angels shall curse, and the Most High will be dishonored among the heathen through him. And the devil maketh him his own as his peculiar instrument, and every wild beast shall master him, and the Most High will hate him. 
for the commandments of the law are twofold, and through prudence must they be fulfilled. For there is a season for a man to embrace his wife, and a season to abstain therefrom for his prayer. So then there are two commandments, and unless they be done in due order, they bring about sin. So also is it with the other commandments. Be ye therefore wise in the Most High and prudent, understanding the order of the commandments and the laws of every work, that the Most High may love you. And when he had charged them with many such words, he exhorted them that they should remove his bones to Hebron and should bury him with his fathers. And when he had eaten and drunken with a merry heart, he covered his face and died. And his sons did according to all things whatsoever Naphtali their father had charged them. Shalom. The Testament of Gad. Gad, Patriarch of the Twelve Tribes of Israel. The Testament of Gad, Chapter 1. The Record of the Testament of Gad. What things he spake to his sons in the 127th year of his life, saying, I was the seventh son born to Jacob, and I was valiant in keeping the flocks. I guarded at night the flock, and whenever the lion came, or wolf, or leopard, or bear, or any wild beast against the fold, I pursued it, and with my hand seizing its foot and whirling it around, I stunned it, and hurled it over two furlongs, and so killed it. Now Joseph was feeding the flock with us for about thirty days, and being tender, he fell sick by reason of the heat. And he returned to Hebron to his father, who made him lie down near him, because he loved him. And Joseph told our father that the sons of Zilpah and Bilhah were slaying the best of the beast, and devouring them without the knowledge of Judah and Reuben. For he saw that I delivered a lamb out of the mouth of the bear, and I put the bear to death, and the lamb I slew, being grieved concerning it that it could not live, and we ate it, and he told our father. And I was wroth with Joseph for that thing until the day that he was sold into Egypt. And the spirit of hatred was in me, and I wished not either to see Joseph or to hear him. And he rebuked us to our faces for having eaten of the flock without Judah. And whatsoever things he told our father, he believed him. I confess now my sin, my children, that oftentimes I wished to kill him, because I hated him to the death. And there were in no wise in me bowels of mercy towards him. Moreover, I hated him yet more because of his dreams. And I would have devoured him out of the land of the living, even as a calf devoureth of the grass from the earth. Therefore, I and Judah sold him to the Ishmaelites for thirty pieces of gold, and ten of them we hid, and showed the twenty to our brethren. And so through my covetousness, I was fully bent on his destruction. And the Elohim of my fathers delivered him from my hands, that I should not work iniquity in Israel. And now, my children, hearken to the words of truth to work righteousness, and all the law of the Most High, and do not go astray through the spirit of hatred, for it is evil in all the doings of men. Whatsoever a man doeth, that doth the hater abhor. Though he worketh the law of the Most High, he praiseth him not. Though he feareth the Most High, and taketh pleasure in that which is righteous, he loveth him not. He dispraiseth the truth, he envieth him that ordereth his way aright. He delighteth in evil speaking, he loveth arrogance. For hatred hath blinded his soul, even as I also looked on Joseph. Take heed therefore, my children, of hatred, for it worketh iniquity against the Most High himself. For it will not hear the words of his commandments concerning the loving of one's neighbor, and it sinneth against the Most High. For if a brother stumble, immediately it wisheth to proclaim it to all men, and is urgent that he should be judged for it, and be punished and slain. And if it be a servant, it accuseth him to his master, and with all affliction it deviseth against him, if it be possible to slay him. For hatred worketh in envy, and it ever sickeneth with envy against them that prosper in well-doing, when it seeth or heareth thereof. For as love would even restore to life the dead, and would call back them that are condemned to die, so hatred would slay the living, and those that have offended in a small matter it would not suffer to live. For the spirit of hatred worketh together with Satan through hastiness of spirit in all things unto men's death. But the spirit of love worketh together with the law of the Most High in long suffering unto the salvation of men. Hatred is evil because it continually abideth with lying, speaking against the truth. 
and it maketh small things to be great, and giveth heed to darkness as to light, and calleth the sweet bitter, and teacheth slander, and war, and violence, and every excess of evil, and it filleth the heart with devilish poison. And these things I say to you from experience, my children, that ye may flee hatred, and cleave to the love of the Most High. Righteousness casteth out hatred, humility destroyeth hatred. For he that is just and humble is ashamed to do wrong, being reproved not of another, but of his own heart, because the Most High vieweth his intent. He speaketh not against any man, because the fear of the Most High overcometh hatred. For fearing lest he should offend the Most High, he will not do any wrong to any man, no, not even in thought. These things I learnt at last, after that I had repented concerning Joseph. For true repentance after a godly sort destroyeth unbelief, and driveth away the darkness, and enlighteneth the eyes, and giveth knowledge to the soul, and guideth the mind to salvation. And those things which it have not learnt from man it knoweth through repentance. For the Most High brought upon me a disease of the heart, and had not the prayers of Jacob my father intervened, it had hardly failed that my spirit had departed. For by what things a man transgresseth, by the same also is he punished. For in that my heart was set mercilessly against Joseph, in my heart too I suffered mercilessly and was judged for eleven months. For so long as I had been envious against Joseph until he was sold. And now, my children, love ye each one his brother, and put away hatred from your hearts, loving one another in deed and in word and in thought of the soul. For in the presence of our Father I spake peaceably with Joseph, and when I had gone out, the spirit of hatred darkened my mind and moved my soul to slay him. Love ye therefore one another from your hearts, and if a man sin against thee, tell him of it gently, and drive out the poison of hatred, and foster not guile in thy soul. And if he confess and repent, forgive him, and if he deny it, strive not with him, lest he swear and thou sin doubly. Let not a stranger hear your secrets amid your striving, lest he hate and become thy enemy, and work great sin against thee. For oft times he will talk guilefully with thee, or evilly overreach thee, taking his poison from himself. Therefore, if he deny it, and is convicted and put to shame and is silenced, do not tempt him on. For he who denieth repenteth, so that he no more doeth wrong against thee. Yea, also he will honor thee, and fear thee, and be at peace with thee. But if he be shameless and abideth in his wrongdoing, even then forgive him from the heart and give the vengeance to the Most High. If a man prospereth more than you, be not grieved, but pray also for him that he may have perfect prosperity. For perchance it is expedient for you thus, and if he be further exalted, be not envious, remembering that all flesh shall die and offer praise to the Most High, who giveth things good and profitable to all men. Seek out the judgments of the Most High, and so shall thy mind rest and be at peace. And though a man become rich by evil means, even as Esau the brother of my father, be not jealous, but wait for the end of the Most High. For either he taketh his benefits away from the wicked, or leaveth them still to the repentant, or to the unrepentant reserveth punishment forever. For the poor man who is free from envy, giving thanks to the Most High in all things, is rich among all men, because he hath not evil jealousy of men. Put away, therefore, hatred from your souls, and love one another with uprightness of heart. And do ye also tell these things to your children, that they honor Judah and Levi, for from them shall the Most High raise up a Savior to Israel. For I know that at the last your children shall depart from them, and shall walk in all wickedness and mischief and corruption before the Most High. And when he had rested for a little while, he had said again to them, My children, obey your father, and bury me near to my fathers. And he drew up his feet, and fell asleep in peace. And after five years they carried him up, and laid him in Hebron with his fathers. Shalom. The Testament of Joseph Joseph, son of Jacob, son of Isaac, son of Abraham. The record of the testament of Joseph. When he was about to die, he called his sons and his brethren together and said to them, My children and brethren, 
hearken to Joseph, the beloved of Israel. Give ear, my sons, unto your father. I have seen in my life envy and death, and I wondered not in the truth of the Most High. These my brethren hated me, and the Most High loved me. They wished to slay me, and the Most High of my fathers guarded me. They led me down into a pit, and the Most High brought me up again. I was sold for a slave, and the Most High made me free. I was taken into captivity, and his strong hand succored me. I was kept in hunger, and the Most High himself nourished me. I was alone, and the Most High comforted me. I was sick, and the Most High visited me. I was in prison, and the Savior showed favor unto me. In bonds, and he released me. Amid slanders, and he pleaded my cause. Amid bitter words of the Egyptians, and he rescued me. Amid envy and guile, and he exalted me. And thus, Potiphar, the chief cook of Pharaoh, entrusted to me his house, and I struggled against a shameless woman, urging me to transgress with her. But the Elohim of Israel, my father, guarded me from the burning flame. I was cast into prison, I was beaten, I was mocked, and the Most High granted me to find pity in the sight of the keeper of the prison. For he will in no wise forsake them that fear him, neither in darkness, nor in bonds, nor in tribulations, nor in necessities. For not as man is the Most High ashamed, nor as the Son of Man is he afraid, nor as one that is earthborn is he weak, or can he be thrust aside, but in all places is he at hand, and in diverse ways doth he comfort departing for a little to try the purpose of the soul. In ten temptations he showed me approved, and in all of them I endured. For endurance is a mighty charm, and patience giveth many good things. How often did the Egyptian threaten me with death? How often did she give me over to punishment and then call me back and threaten me when I would not company with her. And she said to me, Thou shalt be Lord of me and all that is mine, if thou wilt give thyself unto me, and thou shalt be as our master. Therefore, I remembered the words of the fathers of my father Jacob, and I entered into my chamber and prayed unto the Most High, and I fasted in those seven years, and I appeared to my master as one living delicately, for they that fast for the Most High's sake receive beauty of face. And if one gave me wine, I drank it not. And I fasted for three days, and took my food, and gave it to the poor and sick. And I sought the Most High early, and wept for the Egyptian woman of Memphis. For very unceasingly did she trouble me. And at night she came to me under the pretense of visiting me. And at first, because she had no male child, she feigned to count me as a son. And I prayed unto the Most High, and she bare a male child. Therefore, she embraced me as a son, and I knew it not. Last of all, she sought to draw me into fornication. And when I perceived it, I sorrowed even unto death. And when she had gone out, I came to myself and I lamented her for many days because I saw her guile and her deceit. And I declared unto her the words of the Most High, if happily she would turn from her evil lust. How often has she fawned upon me with words as a holy man, with guile in her talk, praising my chastity before her husband while desiring to destroy me when we were alone. She lauded me openly as chaz, and in secret she said unto me, Fear not my husband, for he is persuaded concerning thy chastity, so that even should one tell him concerning us, he would in no wise believe. For all these things I lay upon the ground in sackcloth, and I besought the Most High, that he would deliver me 
from the Egyptian woman. And when she prevailed not, she came again to me under the plea of instruction that she might know the word of the Most High. And she said unto me, If thou willest that I should leave my idols, be persuaded by me, and I will persuade my husband to depart from his idols, and we will walk in the law of thy Elohim. And I said unto her, The Most High will it not that those who reverence him should be in uncleanness, nor doth he take pleasure in them that commit adultery. And she held her peace, longing to accomplish her evil desire. And I gave myself yet more to fasting and prayer that the Most High should deliver me from her. And again, at another time, she said unto me, If thou wilt not commit adultery, I will kill my husband, and so will I lawfully take thee to be my husband. I therefore, when I heard this, rent my garment and said, Woman, reverence the Most High, and do not do this evil deed, lest thou be utterly destroyed. For I will declare thy ungodly thought unto all men. She therefore, being afraid, besought that I would declare to no one her wickedness, and she departed soothing me with gifts and sending to me every delight of the sons of men. And she sendeth to me food sprinkled with enchantments. And when the eunuch who brought it came, I looked up and beheld a terrible man giving me with the dish a sword. And I perceived that her scheme was for the deception of my soul. And when he had gone out, I wept, nor did I taste that or any other of her food. So then after one day she came to me and observed the food and said unto me, What is this, that thou hast not eaten of the food? And I said unto her, It is because thou fillest it with death. And how saidest thou, I come not near to idols, but to the Most High alone? Now therefore know that the Elohim of my father hath revealed unto me by an angel thy wickedness, and I have kept it to convict thee if happily thou mayest see it and repent, but that thou mayest learn that the wickedness of the ungodly hath no power over them that reverence the Most High in chastity. I took it and ate it before her, saying, The Elohim of my fathers and the angel of Abraham shall be with me. And she fell upon her face at my feet and wept. And I raised her up and admonished her, and she promised to do this iniquity no more. But because her heart was set upon me to commit lewdness, she sighed, and her countenance fell. And when her husband saw her, he said unto her, Why is thy countenance fallen? And she said, I have a pain at my heart, and the groanings of my spirit do oppress me. And so he comforted her who was not sick. Then she rushed into me while her husband was yet without and said unto me, I will hang myself or cast myself into a well or over a cliff if thou wilt not consent unto me. And when I saw the spirit of Belial was troubling her, I prayed unto the Most High and said unto her, Why art thou troubled and disturbed, blinded in sins? Remember that if thou killest thyself, Satan, the concubine of thy husband, thy rival, will beat thy children and will destroy thy memorial from off the earth. And she said unto me, Lo, then thou lovest me. This alone is sufficient for me, that thou carest for my life and my children. I have expectation that I shall enjoy my desire. And she knew not that because of my Elohim I spake thus, and not because of her. For if a man hath fallen before the passion of a wicked desire, then by that hath he become enslaved, even as also was she. And if he hear any good thing with regard to the passion whereby he is vanquished, he receiveth it unto his wicked desire. I declare unto you, my children, that it was about the sixth hour when she departed from me, and I knelt before the Most High all that day and continued all the night, and about dawn I rose up weeping and praying for a release from the Egyptian woman. At last, then, she laid hold of my garments, forcibly dragging me to have connection with her. 
When therefore I saw that in her madness she was forcibly holding my garments, I fled away naked. And she falsely accused me to her husband, and the Egyptian cast me into the prison in his house. And on the morrow, having scourged me, the Egyptian sent me into the prison in his house. When therefore I was in fetters, the Egyptian woman fell sick from her vexation. And listen to me, how I sang praises unto the Most High while I was in the abode of darkness, and with glad voice rejoiced and glorified my Elohim, only because by a pretext I had been rid of the Egyptian woman. How often hath she sent unto me, saying, Consent to fulfill my desire, and I will release thee from thy bonds, and I will free thee from the darkness." And not even in thoughts did I incline unto her. For the Most High loveth him who in a den of darkness fasteth with chastity, rather than him who in secret chambers liveth deliciously without restraint. And whosoever liveth in chastity and desireth also glory. And if the Most High knoweth that it is expedient for him, he bestoweth this also upon him, even as upon me. How often, though she were sick, did she come down to me at unlooked for times and listen to my voice as I prayed. And when I heard her groanings, I held my peace. For when I was in her house, she was wont to bear her arms and breast and legs that I might fall before her, for she was very beautiful, splendidly adorned for my deception. And the Most High guarded me from her devices. Ye see, therefore, my children, how great things patience worketh, and prayer with fasting. And if ye therefore follow after sobriety and purity, in patience and humility of heart, the Most High will dwell among you, because he loveth sobriety. And wheresoever the Most High dwelleth, even though a man fall into envy, or slavery, or slander, the Most High who dwelleth in him for his sobriety's sake, not only delivereth him from evil, but also exalteth and glorifieth him, even as me. For in every way the man is guarded, whether in deed or in word or in thought. My brethren know how my father loved me, and I was not exalted in my heart. Although I was a child, I had the fear of the Most High in my thoughts. For I knew that all things should pass away, and I kept myself within bounds, and I honored my brethren, and through fear of them I held my peace when I was sold, and revealed not my family to the Ishmaelites, that I was the son of Jacob, a great man and a mighty. Do ye also, therefore, have the fear of the Most High in your works, and honor your brethren. For every one who worketh the law of the Most High shall be loved by him. And when I came to the Endoclopate with the Ishmaelites, they asked me, and I said that I was a slave from their house, that I might not put my brethren to shame. And the eldest of them said unto me, Thou art not a slave, for even thy appearance doth make it manifest concerning thee. And he threatened me even unto death, but I said that I was their slave. Now when we came into Egypt, they strove concerning me, which of them should buy me and take me. Therefore, it secured good to all that I should remain in Egypt with a merchant of their trade, until they should return, bringing merchandise. And the Most High gave me favor in the eyes of the merchant, and he entrusted unto me his house. And the Most High blessed him by my means, and increased him in silver and gold. And I was with him three months and five days. About that time, the Memphian wife of Potiphar passed by with great pomp and cast her eyes upon me because her eunuchs told her concerning me. And she told her husband concerning the merchant that he had become rich by means of a young Hebrew, saying, And they say that men have indeed stolen him out of the land of Canaan. Now therefore, execute judgment with him and take away the youth to be thy steward. So shall the Elohim of the Hebrews bless thee, for grace from heaven is upon him. And Potiphar was persuaded by her words, and commanded the merchant to be brought, and said unto him, 
What is this that I hear that thou stillest souls out of the land of the Hebrews and sellest them for slaves? The merchant therefore fell upon his face and besought him, saying, I beseech thee, my Lord, I know not what thou sayest. And he said, Whence then is thy Hebrew servant? And he said, The Ishmaelites entrusted him to me until they should return. And he believed him not, but commanded him to be stripped and beaten. And when he persisted, Potiphar said, Let the youth be brought. And when I was brought in, I did obeisance to the chief of the concubines. And he took me apart from him and said unto me, Art thou a slave or free? And I said, A slave. And he said unto me, Whose slave art thou? And I said unto him, The Ishmaelites. And again he said unto me, How becamest thou their slave? And I said, They bought me out of the land of Canaan. And he believed me not and said, Thou liest. And he commanded me to be stripped and beaten. Now the Memphian woman was looking through a window while I was being beaten, and she sent unto her husband, saying, Thy judgment is unjust, for thou dost even punish a free man who hath been stolen, as though he were a transgressor. And when I gave no other answer, though I was beaten, he commanded that we should be kept in guard, until, said he, the owners of the boy shall come. And his wife said unto him, Wherefore dost thou detain in captivity this noble child, who ought rather to be set at liberty and wait upon thee? For she wished to see me in desire of sin, and I was ignorant concerning all these things. Then said he to his wife, It is not the custom of the Egyptians to take away that which belongeth to others before proof is given. This he said concerning the merchant and concerning me, that I must be imprisoned. Now after twenty-four days came the Ishmaelites, and having heard that Jacob my father was mourning because of me, they said unto me, How is it that thou saidest that thou wast a slave? And lo, we have learnt that thou art the son of a mighty man in the land of Canaan, and thy father grieveth for thee in sackcloth. And again I would have wept, but I restrained myself, that I should not put my brethren to shame. And I said, I know not. I am a slave. Then they took counsel to sell me, that I should not be found in their hands. For they feared Jacob, lest he should work upon them a deadly vengeance. For it had been heard that he was mighty with the Most High and with men. Then said the merchant unto them, Release me from the judgment of Potiphar. They therefore came and asked for me, saying, He was bought by us with money, and he sent us away. Now the Memphian woman pointed me out to her husband that he should buy me, for I hear, said she, that they are selling him. And she sent a eunuch to the Ishmaelites and asked them to sell me. And since he was not willing to traffic with them, he returned. So when the eunuch had made trial of them, he made known to his mistress that they ask a large price for their slave. And she sent another eunuch, saying, Even though they demand two minae of gold, take heed not to spare the gold, only buy the boy and bring him hither. And he gave them eighty pieces of gold for me, and told his mistress that a hundred had been given for me. And when I saw it, I held my peace, that the eunuch should not be punished. Ye see, my children, what great things I endured, that I should not put my brethren to shame. Do ye also love one another, and with long suffering hide ye one another's faults? For the Most High delighteth in the unity of brethren, and in the purpose of a heart approved unto love. And when my brethren came into Egypt, and learnt that I returned their money unto them, and upbraided them not, yea, that I even comforted them, and after the death of Jacob I loved them more abundantly, and all things whatsoever he commanded I did very abundantly. Then they marveled, for I suffered them not to be afflicted even unto the smallest matter, and all that was in my hand I gave unto them. Their children were my children, and my children were as their servants. Their life was my life and all their suffering was my suffering, and all their sickness was my infirmity. My land was their land, my counsel their counsel, 
and I exalted not myself among them in arrogance because of my worldly glory, but I was among them as one of the least. If ye also therefore walk in the commandments of the Most High, my children, he will exalt you there and will bless you with good things forever and ever. And if anyone seeketh to do evil unto you, do ye by well-doing pray for him, and ye shall be redeemed of the Most High from all evil. For behold, ye see that through long suffering I took unto wife even the daughter of my master, and a hundred talents of gold were given me with her, for the Most High made them to serve me. And he gave me also beauty as a flower above the beautiful ones of Israel, and he preserved me unto old age in strength and in beauty, because I was like in all things to Jacob. Hear ye also, my children, the visions which I saw. There were twelve deer feeding, and the nine were divided and scattered in the land, likewise also the three. And I saw that from Judah was born a virgin, wearing a linen garment, and from her went forth a lamb without spot. And on his left hand there was, as it were, a lion, and all the beasts rushed against him. And the lamb overcame them and destroyed them and trod them underfoot. And because of him, the angels rejoiced and men and all the earth. And these things shall take place in their season in the last days. Do ye therefore, my children, observe the commandments of the Most High and honor Judah and Levi. For from them shall arise unto you the Lamb of the Most High by grace, saving the Gentiles and Israel. For his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, which shall not be shaken. But my kingdom among you shall come to an end as a watcher's hammock, which after the summer will not appear. I know that after my death, the Egyptians will afflict you, but the Most High will undertake your cause and will bring you into that which he promised to your fathers. But carry ye up my bones with you. For when my bones are taken up, the Most High will be with you in light and Beliar shall be in darkness with the Egyptians. And carry ye up Zilphi, your mother, and lay her near Bilhah by the Hippodrome, by the side of Rachel. And when he had said these things, he stretched out his feet and slept the long sleep. And all Israel bewailed him, and all Egypt with a great lamentation. For he felt even for the Egyptians, even as his own members, and showed them kindness, abiding them and aiding them in every work and counsel and matter. So be it. The Testament of Benjamin Patriarch of the Twelve Tribes of Israel The Testament of Benjamin Chapter 1 The record of the words of Benjamin, which he set forth to his sons after he had lived a hundred and twenty years. And he kissed them and said, As Isaac was born to Abraham in his hundredth year, so also was I to Jacob. Now since Rachel died in giving me birth, I had no milk. Therefore, I was suckled by Bilhah, her handmaid. For Rachel remained barren for twelve years after that she had borne Joseph. And she prayed the Most High with fasting twelve days, and she conceived and bare me. For our father loved Rachel dearly and prayed that he might see two sons born from her. Therefore was I called the son of days, which is Benjamin. When therefore I went into Egypt, and Joseph my brother recognized me, he said unto me, What did they tell my father in that they sold me? And I said unto him, They dabbled thy coat with blood and sent it and said, Look if this is the coat of thy son. And he said to me, Even so, brother, for when the Ishmaelites took me, one of them stripped off my coat and gave me a girdle and scourged me and bade me to run. And as he went away to hide my garment, a lion met him and slew him. And so his fellows were afraid and sold me to their companions. Do ye also therefore, my children, love the Most High of heaven and keep his commandments and be followers of the good and holy man, Joseph, 
and let your mind be unto good, even as ye know me. He that hath his mind good seeth all things rightly. Fear ye the Most High, and love your neighbor, and even though the spirits of Belial allure you into all troublous wickedness, yet shall no troublous wickedness have dominion over you, even as it had not over Joseph my brother. How many men wished to slay him, and the Most High shielded him. For he that feareth the Most High, and loveth his neighbor, cannot be smitten by Belial's spirit of the air being shielded by the fear of the Most High. Nor can he be ruled over by the device of men or of beasts, for he is aided by the love of the Most High which he hath toward his neighbor. For he even besought our father Jacob that he would pray for our brethren, that the Most High would not impute to them the evil that they devised concerning Joseph. And thus Jacob cried out, my child Joseph, thou hast prevailed over the bowels of thy father Jacob. And he embraced him and kissed him for two hours, saying, In thee shall be fulfilled the prophecy of heaven concerning the Lamb of Elohim, even the Savior of the world. That spotless one shall he be delivered up for transgressors, and sinless shall he be put to death for ungodly men in the blood of the covenant, for the salvation of the Gentiles and of Israel, and shall destroy Belial and them that serve him. Know ye, my children, the end of the good man. Be followers of his compassion in a good mind, that ye also may wear crowns of glory. The good man hath not a dark eye, for he showeth mercy to all men, even though they be sinners, even though they devise evil concerning him. So he that doeth good overcometh the evil, being shielded by him that is good, and he loveth the righteous as his own soul. If any one is glorified, he envieth him not. If any one is enriched, he is not jealous. If any one is valiant, he praiseth him. He trusteth and laudeth that is sober-minded. He showeth mercy to the poor. He is kindly disposed toward the weak. He singeth the praises of the Most High. As for him who hath the fear of the Most High, he protecteth him as with a shield. Him that loveth the Most High, he aideth. Him that rejecteth the Most High, he admonisheth and turneth back. And him that hath the grace of a good spirit, he loveth even as his own soul. If ye have a good mind, my children, then will both wicked men be at peace with you, and the profligate will reverence you and turn unto good, and the covetous shall not only cease from their inordinate desire, but shall even give the fruits of their covetousness to them that are afflicted. If ye do well, even the unclean spirits shall flee from you. Yea, the very beast shall flee from you in dread. For where the reverence for good works is present unto the mind, darkness fleeth away from him. For if any one is injurious to a holy man, he repenteth, for the holy man showeth pity on his reviler, and holdeth his peace. And if any one betray a righteous soul, and the righteous man, though praying, be humbled for a little while, yet not long after he appeareth far more glorious, even as was Joseph my brother. The mind of the good man is not in the power of the deceit of the spirit of Belial, for the angel of peace guideth his soul. He gazeth not passionately on corruptible things, nor gathereth together unrighteous riches unto desire of unrighteous pleasure. He delighteth not in wicked pleasure, he hurteth not his neighbor. He pampereth not himself with food, he erreth not in the pride of his eyes, for the Most High is his portion. The good mind admitted not the glory and dishonor of men, neither knoweth it any guile or lie, fighting or reviling. For the Most High dwelleth in him and lighteth up his soul, and he rejoiceth towards all men at every time. The good mind hath not two tongues of blessing and of cursing, of insult and of honor, of sorrow and of joy, of quietness and of trouble, of hypocrisy and of truth, of poverty and of wealth. But it hath one disposition, pure and uncorrupt, concerning all men. It hath no double sight, 
nor double hearing, nor double mindedness. For in everything which he doeth, or speaketh, or seeth, he knoweth that the Most High watcheth his soul, and he cleanseth his mind, that he be not condemned by the Most High and men. But of Belial, every work is twofold, and hath no singleness. Flee ye therefore, my children, the evil doing of Belial, for it giveth a sword to them that obeyeth, and the sword is the mother of seven evils. First, the mind conceiveth through Belial, and first there is envy, secondly, desperation, thirdly, tribulation, fourthly, captivity, fifthly, neediness, sixthly, trouble, seventhly, desolation. Therefore also Cain is delivered over to seven vengeances by the Most High. For in every hundred years the Most High brought one plague upon him. Two hundred years he suffered, and in the nine hundredth year he was brought to desolation at the flood. For Abel, his righteous brother's sake. In seven hundred years was Cain judged, and Lamech in seventy times seven, because forever those who are likened unto Cain in envy, unto hatred of brethren, shall be judged with the same punishment. Do ye also therefore, my children, flee ill-doing, envy, and hatred of brethren, and cleave to goodness and love? He that hath a pure mind in love looketh not after a woman unto fornication, for he hath no defilement in his heart, because the Spirit of the Most High resteth in him. For as the sun is not defiled by shining over dung and mire, but rather drieth up both, and driveth away the ill smell, so also the pure mind, constrained among the defilements of the earth, rather edifieth, and itself suffereth no defilement. Now I suppose from the words of the righteous Enoch that there will be also evil doings among you, for ye will commit fornication with the fornication of Sodom, and shall perish all save a few, and will multiply inordinate lust with women, and the kingdom of the Most High shall not be among you, for forthwith he will take it away. Nevertheless, the temple of the Most High shall be built in your portion, and shall be glorious among you, for he shall take it, and the twelve tribes shall be gathered together there, and all the Gentiles, until the Most High shall send forth his salvation in the visitation of his only begotten one, and he shall enter into the front of the temple, and there shall the Sovereign One be treated with outrage, and he shall be lifted up upon a tree, and the veil of the temple shall be rent, and the Spirit of the Most High shall descend upon the Gentiles as fire poured forth, and he shall arise from the grave, and shall ascend from earth into heaven. And I know how lowly he shall be upon the earth, and how glorious in the heaven. Now when Joseph was in Egypt, I longed to see his visage and the form of his countenance. And through the prayers of Jacob my father, I saw him while awake in the daytime in his full and perfect shape. Know ye therefore, my children, that I am dying. Work therefore truth and righteousness, each one with his neighbor, and teach judgment unto faithful doing, and keep the law of the Most High in his commandments. For these things do I teach you instead of all inheritance. Do ye also therefore give them to your children for an everlasting possession. For so did both Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. All these things they gave us for an inheritance, saying, Keep the commandments of the Most High until the Most High shall reveal his salvation to all nations. Then shall ye see Enoch, Noah, Shem, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, arising on the right hand in gladness. Then shall we also arise, each one over our tribe, worshiping the King of heaven, who appeared upon the earth in the form of a man of humility. And as many as believed on him on the earth shall rejoice with him. And then shall all men arise, some unto glory and some unto shame. And the Most High shall judge Israel first, even for the wrong they did unto him. For when he appeared as a deliverer, Elohim in the flesh, they believed him not. And then shall he judge all the Gentiles, as many as believed him not when he appeared upon earth. 
and he shall reprove Israel among the chosen ones of the Gentiles, even as he reproved Esau among the Midianites who deceived their brethren so that they fell into fornication and idolatry. And they were alienated from the Most High and became as they that were no children in the portion of them that fear the Most High. But if ye walk in holiness in the presence of the Most High, ye shall dwell in hope again in me, and all Israel shall be gathered unto the Most High. And I shall no longer be called a ravening wolf on account of your ravages, but a worker of the Most High, distributing food to them that work what is good. And one shall rise up from my seed in the latter times, beloved of the Most High, hearing upon the earth his voice, enlightening with new knowledge all the Gentiles, bursting in upon Israel for salvation with the light of knowledge, and tearing it away from it like a wolf, and giving it to the synagogue of the Gentiles. And until the consummation of the ages shall he be in the synagogues of the Gentiles and among their rulers as a strain of music in the mouth of all. And he shall be inscribed in the holy books, both his work and his word, and he shall be a chosen one of the Most High forever. And because of him, my father Jacob instructed me, saying, He shall fill up that which lacketh of thy tribe. And when he had finished his words, he said, I charge you, my children, carry up my bones out of Egypt and bury me at Hebron near my father's. So Benjamin died a hundred and twenty-five years old in a good old age, and they placed him in a coffin. And in the ninety-first year of the departure of the children of Israel from Egypt, they and their brethren brought up the bones of their fathers secretly in a place which is called Canaan, and they buried them in Hebron by the feet of their fathers. And they returned from the land of Canaan and dwelt in Egypt until the day of their departing from the land of Egypt. Shalom.